right. Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Today, my guest, very talented audio engineer, Mr. John Stevens. How you doing, John? I'm doing great. How are you, Jason? Uh, I'm doing good, man. Another uh, another great day. Uh, it was leg day today. <laughs> no. Leg day. Yep. <laughs> Freaking hate leg day. But you got to do it, man. You got to do it. So I'm feeling good. Feeling uh, spunky today. So uh, how you been? Uh, how you been holding up in the uh, end of the world so far, man? So far, so good. Um, been busy at work, which is nice. But uh, you know, life at with home and my three-year-old daughter has been really busy, and she's very spunky. So she keeps me busy when I'm at home. Yeah. My my wife is able to keep an eye on her while I'm at work, so that's great. She's she's doing uh, the homework, uh, home stuff. So I was still doing the uh, still doing the homeschool. Well, or they, she's only they three, go, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. But she's at home with her all day, so she she doesn't have a. That's her job. So nice. Yeah, that's good. Getting to spend time with the kids and everything yep. like that. So yeah, you just uh, what you just recently got a uh, an unexpected promotion at work, right? So you're yeah, kind of a busy. promotion. Uh, promotion in name, not in uh, monetary value yet. <laughs> but hopefully, when things pick back up in the industry, it'll bring in a nice paycheck. Nice man. Yeah. Nice. So moving on up there, that's great, man. So uh, yeah, so for those who don't know John, right, you do pretty cool install work and, you know, you build badass studios, badass club installs and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, you've been able to sustain during the pandemic and start doing some up and coming shit, I believe, right? So far, yeah, been doing pretty good. Uh, we got a lot of the company I work for, we got a lot of business with casinos and hotels, commercial businesses. Um, gyms all this other stuff so we have a lot of stuff coming in and uh, luckily we're able to maintain and keep things going during the lull so it's been rough but uh we've lost a lot of our part-time guys obviously yeah. i mean they're they weren't getting paid so they had to find other other jobs and so it's basically just been me this whole past six seven months ouch yeah that's rough yeah, that was me too, man. I was always a uh, on-call guy for all these companies doing uh, doing audio engineering as well. And so, of course, like there's no work for the the whole on-call department of like the bulk yeah, of Las done. Vegas. It's, it's done. done. Yeah. Yeah. A couple. Got, of, I mean, we both have a lot of the same friends, so yeah. You know, we see it looks on posts on Facebook and you know uh, Instagram and Twitter and everything, and people are like, uh, "What are we supposed to do? <laughs> I got no job." So. Uh, luckily, I still had one, so that's good for me, obviously, and my family. Um, but uh, you know, it, it feels pretty pretty bad for all my other friends and you know our industry really. And on, on in a whole, it's been it's pretty been a nightmare for it. I mean, Vegas is obviously a tourist city and a uh, you know a big event industry, and not having conventions coming in or you know. Big shows, nightclubs, sporting events. Like, I mean, obviously the Raider Stadium's open now, and there's limited capacity there, but it's not drawing in as many people as it used to. Oh, are they actually doing? They're letting people go to the football game now. They are. Uh, I think I don't know if it's at that the same level that Sisolak put out there, 500 maximum. But uh, I think they may, might allow more than that. I don't know, or maybe it could be like 10 percent of the venue's cap capacity. Huh. I don't know what it actually is. Yes, I'd have to look into it. I don't. I don't know what it actually is, but let me see. I could probably look it up online for us real quick and uh, see. I know here. the last few games there at the stadium, they've had people in the stands. Obviously, it wasn't packed, but uh, they're like spread out in groups. That's good. Last time I checked, I've been I've been staying off of uh, like the news and the social media so much, so I don't get so bummed out because it's nothing but just disappointing information constantly so yeah. i've just been trying to focus on like mindfulness practices and shit like that right instead of just like it'll come back when it comes back and yeah. I, I just be patient about it is kind of my method but yeah i try and stay off it as much as i can like mainly thing i go on social media for is just seeing what's going on with my family and then you know maybe five percent of what i see on social media is my family and the rest is just random bs that i don't really care about yeah, makes, makes me want to get rid of it, <laughs> but uh, I keep it on there just for now, for the time being. Yeah, that's what we were talking about before we started the uh, cameras. Like, I'm 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 pretty good at the uh, practice of uh, removing that Facebook app from my phone pretty regularly, you know. And I just like keep it off of there. I'm I'm not interested in seeing what everybody does, and I'll post from my laptop or something right, like right. that, as opposed to I, I disabled involved. my Facebook account for like one week, 
And then my wife asked me like, Hey, did you see this? I'm like, no, my Facebook's disabled. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't really tell her. I just, I just did it and just to see how it was. And it was, uh, it was interesting because, you know, I didn't go on my phone, check it constantly what's going on. So it is kind of weird how entangled you are with it when you're not thinking about it. But if you actually actively not do it, then you can realize how many hours you spend on a day doing that stuff. Yeah, I, I especially like the, um, the I don't know if you call it an app or whatever, but in the settings, it lets you tell it tells you how much time you've been using your yeah. phone, how much time, screen time screen you've been time, using. Yeah. 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 And that's always, even when I like, like I leave my phone upstairs or I, I just don't, I don't look at the thing until at least noon, like until my workout's done and my meditation's done and like breakfast is in my hands. Then I'll go, okay, what's going on with the world? Uh, which is great because if I look at that thing first thing in the morning, it's uh, it's a stress bucket, you know. Right. I just I can't. I'm not prepared for all this bad news that's coming my way, and I get I get worked up about it, you know. So yeah, I mean, most of the thing I do on there is just YouTube videos and you know watching like gaming reviews and stuff, and you know here and there some small political things, but I don't really. I try not to watch that as much. It's just more, you know, like engineering videos. Gotten in a lot of into the, uh, um, the Forged in Fire series on uh, History Channel. Forged in Fire. What's yeah. that? It's, a, it's about these guys that go into a competition and they uh, they make, you know, knives and weapons and a bunch of different stuff. It's a really cool show. I like it because it's all hands-on stuff and they're just creating these knives and swords and everything it's oh, awesome oh cool and that's expanded me into finding other oh you yeah know, look at that videos creators on youtube that do their own type of stuff so viking uh, battle ads yeah it's really cool show man i mean it's it's a cool competition show that's dope kind of in the same realm as that um uh the shooting show that they used to have that was like four or five seasons i forgot what that one was called but that was fun i like that one they don't do it anymore unfortunately I don't remember what that was called. I think it's Top Shot, I think it was called. Top Shot? Oh, I think I, I think did. That was, I think it was like five or six seasons. Yeah, I yeah. think I did watch a little bit of that. That was pretty cool, man. People don't uh, understand uh, how hard it is to make some of those long-distance shots. and some of that. I mean, shooting guns is a real art form, man. Yes. Yeah. It takes serious talent, serious breathing skill, serious, you know, being able to, uh, you know, slow your heart rate and really focus on taking that shot, man. Yeah. Same with like archery. Yeah. I want to try archery. I haven't done archery before. I've done, I've gone shooting before, but, um, I haven't done any arch actual archery. I've done crossbows before as a kid, but you know, or at the carnivals where you can shoot the balloons and everything. I've done that, but I haven't done an actual, like a long bow or a compound bow. I think that'd be really fun to do. Yeah. The, dude, the compound bows are tight. My dad had a pretty cool compound bow. Um, that I used to shoot. When, well, I think I used to shoot that one, or he had a few. He had a few when I was a kid. But I used to love shooting, shooting bows and arrows when I was a kid. Man, it was a lot of fun. But I always listened to um, a podcast about that um, on Joe Rogan. He has a professional archer that comes on, and they're talking about how uh, you can't take any kind of like medication, you know, mm -hmm. for or any kind. You can't smoke weed or anything because it slows you, it, it messes with your heart rate. Right. And so they consider it a performing enhancing drug because it's you can't just go take these things to calm <laughs> right, you down right. and then go shoot bows and arrows against guys that are dealing with the real pressure of the event um oh here we go right here um oh no that's the ravens one is at fourteen thousand is the capacity for raven stadium right now yeah raiders is a uh, allegiant stadium stadium i believe okay i don't know what they put in place i'm assuming it might be higher than other places because we're we're further along than most well, not most, but a lot of cities, major cities at least. I'm not finding the actual number though. Anyways. Well, regardless, I know I know there's people there. Reduced. I just don't know how many it is total. I mean, you've driven by the stadium, seen the outside of it, obviously. It's impressive. It, it looks pretty awesome. And it's yeah, impressive uh, seeing how quick it went up, you know. I know, right? Even like, during before the whole pandemic started, like just the frame being built out, the foundation being laid, it was it's easy to see because you're just if you're to take the Russell ramp and you can just on top you can look down at it. it. It was cool to see. And what's like the um, they're still going to expect people to park at the casinos, huh? I think so. Over at the it's M, ridiculous. I think is where it's at, and they're having shuttles from there. Oh, they're shuttling from the M, huh? I All the way so. down south there. Yeah, man. 
keep it away from the from the strip, I guess. Oh, I thought they were going to be forced to like park at the New York, New York and shit right across the I street. I think you can, but I don't yeah. know if, I, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I, I know there was that lot next to South Point, that whole dirt lot they were planning on maybe doing something there for oh. a parking lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. But there's also talk of maybe doing the train station for the Virgin train go to California. I mean, Are they still doing that? Who knows? Virgin, huh? Who Richard knows? Branson jumped on that project. Richard Branson jumped on that. Thing. Well, then maybe it'll get done. Maybe I don't know. I mean, they've been talking about it for done. how long now? How many years? And it's always been canceled. So, I, I don't, I I don't really have one way or another opinion on it. It's just, I I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, you figure they would have bought out all those old businesses behind uh, where they're putting the stadium up. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I think they were all holding out for more money, and then they just ended up saying, screw it, we don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Which is just crazy. Well, they did just buy uh, the Hard Rock Hotel, so Hard Rock is now Virgin Hotels. Oh, is it? Is that what happened to that? I yep. know that closed down a while back. Yep. We're doing some work there, so. Oh, cool. Um, went through a walkthrough of one of their places there to kind of do a system assessment and see what's still working and what's not. And, um, yeah, it, I don't know when the, there's advertising saying that it's going to be opening fall this year. So that's, you know, here till the end of the year. I don't know if that's actually true, but they're, they've they been doing a lot of construction there. It's all, you know, walled off and um, fenced up. The parking lot's all destroyed still. So, or the front entrance, I mean, not the parking lot, but the front entrance where the guitar used to be. Oh, Okay. Yeah. What happened to that big guitar, it's still, right? It's, it's in the back corner. Oh, like, is it? Yeah, like I, when I was walk, going there the other day, and I went, we went into the construction access, and it's just laying there on the ground. I'm like, oh, I thought that would be at the Neon Museum or something, but maybe eventually it will be, but right now it's just sitting in the back lot. That's crazy. Just laying down on the ground. Man, that was such a staple of Vegas. Yeah. I don't know how many concerts I saw at that venue. And then Vinyl, too, was just a, that was a nice up-and-coming, like, smaller club that they were able to mm -hmm. do a lot of the local acts and the cover bands. And even even national touring acts are coming through there. Right. And uh, are they still going to, are they still doing, is that what you're doing, and doing an install for, like, the big event uh, center? Uh, or uh, Right now, it's just working on one of the smaller spaces. Oh, okay. Um, it's, uh, it was Vanity Nightclub. Um, we're working on that, and hopefully that'll lead to other things. Nice. Yeah, uh, man, that was one of the that was one of my favorite venues out here. Was the uh, the Hard Rock venue, man? The, just a big giant square or whatever, but right. it was fun. I got to do a lot of cool shows there, and I got to see a lot of cool shows there, man. Freaking Joe used to work there, right? Joe, Joe Bresnik, I think that's. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he, I know he doesn't work there anymore, obviously, but uh, yeah, it was. I think he worked for uh, Planet Hollywood for a little bit. Oh, okay. I don't remember. I. I I don't want to say something that's wrong and nah, know, nobody cares. Besmirch him or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Besmirch him. <laughs> uh, oh, let's see. We got oh, Vanity Nightclub permanently closed. Yep. Cool. Are they changing the name? Are they keeping it Vanity? Uh, like I'm assuming they're going to change the name. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. No, nah, probably not. Probably not. But nah. I can say that I, they're going more towards a, a a sports bar emphasis. I think. Okay. Yeah, that's really a uh, that's really a big seller now, especially with uh, now that we got the hockey team and we got the Raiders Stadium, and I think they're even talking about putting a baseball stadium like a little bit behind the strip. I heard something about that for like actual MLB or yeah, like, I mean they have the one over in Summerlin. Yeah, they have that one, but I think they're trying to do like every like I heard, but I don't I don't know if it's going to happen or not. But somewhere somewhere near like the uh, where the Ferris wheel is. Oh, there's some some space over there where they were looking at. That's not big enough. I don't think yeah. so. Maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I it would be interesting. I don't know what team would come here. Right? I mean, unless they have another expansion team which would make it an odd number of teams which wouldn't really work, but Yeah. Who knows? Freaking who knows. I mean, baseball's my sport. I love baseball. I'm an Angels fan, but you know, I haven't living out here makes it hard. I haven't been to an Angels game in like 5 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it kind of sucks at that point. And obviously, you can't really go right now. So season's over. It wasn't really a season. They played like 60 games instead of 162. Is that Oh man, is that what happened? I haven't yeah. been paying attention too much to this. I, I don't even know who's. I think I think the Yankees in. I don't even know who's in the playoffs. I haven't really watched. <laughs> I, I don't care this year. Yeah. Like when they said their baseball's coming back, I'm like, well, how many games are they going to play? And they're like, it's going to be a condensed season, which, okay, I don't really care. 
Like, yeah. It's not a real season. It's like you can't get all the full stats from that. I mean, baseball is a statistics game, so it's like how it's that whole this whole season is going to be here's the stats with an asterisk. Yeah, for like, sure. Pre- how they did with previous with 1961 with an asterisk, you know. What was that about 1961? I'm not from, I'm not aware. Uh, that was uh, with the number of home runs um, when they were counting them, and they expanded the number of games in 61 oh. from I think like 120 something to 160. So they ended up saying that you know they everything uh, before that everything before that was the true numbers, and everything after that was you know it was an asterisk because they beat the home run record of Babe Ruth and. Like oh he didn't really beat it because he had more games but oh. that's what that's what it was basically from what I, I recall I mean there was a there's a movie on HBO called sixty one and it was really cool it was a good movie if you like baseball movies yeah, or sports cool. movies in general actually but I, that was a really good one and do you know what I saw recently that we really liked was um, draft right our I draft seen that day one. is with um, Kevin Costner is that yeah it was Kevin Costner and he's drafting for the Browns. And he's okay. pulling all kinds of shit left and right, and it's like his last draft for this team. And they think he's going to go for a defense, but he's trying to pull this quarterback in, who, right. you know. And it, we, but uh, just watching the whole process of like draft, like I did, I've done fantasy football drafts a lot, and that's right. a lot of fun. And there's so much research that goes into it. But watching Kevin Costner play this uh, role, which it was uh, based on a true story. Mm-hmm. Um, Man, it's a lot of pressure those guys are under to manage the team, let oh, alone yeah. get the, you oh, know, yeah. you don't really think about all that when you're watching the games. It's all about, money, man. Like, how are you going to get more revenue in? Yeah. Like, got to get the players to bring up the recognition of the team. And, I mean, that's one thing that kind of I've been happy about with the Angels, if going back to baseball at least, is, uh, you know, with Mike Trout is probably one of the most um, recognized players in the in the Major League Baseball. and. It, it's kind of disheartening that he doesn't have a better team behind him. I mean, it is it's a good team, but it's they haven't been competitive in you know since two thousand two when they won the World Series. Yeah, that was fun. I remember that. It's nice when your team goes, man. Oh yeah. I mean, I wasn't I was in college playing baseball at um in Mount at Mount Sac, uh, Mount San Antonio College in uh, Walnut, California. What'd you play? Uh, I was pitcher. You're the pitcher, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. big man. So we we had a thing at that time where um, our team went there and we basically got to volunteer to work there. So I was actually working concessions at Angel Stadium during the playoffs. So I was like, I kind of got to see a free game, yeah. a playoff game. Obviously, we weren't supposed to stop and watch, you know. But I was. What are you there for? I I, I you know I I went over there and I play I, I handed out peanuts and all this other stuff and then, you know, got to go down below and watch the the team come in and that was really cool i mean that was that is 19 cool. 20 years old so it's like oh look at all these baseball players while i was playing baseball so yeah i missed that that was fun that was awesome. like good days yeah i got to go to uh like one or two games uh when i was living in san diego i got to go see the padres play a couple times petco park is awesome yeah it's right there on the bay I mean, was that petco park where i saw them because uh, if you saw it in san diego yeah, yeah. petco park yeah okay yeah, I saw a concert recently there uh, doing a gig. I got to go see the Foo Fighters and Weezer. Ooh. I was out there doing Cisco. Nice. And they were so cool. Like, I love when the client, sometimes you get a client that's like, stay away from our coffee. And then sometimes you get a client that's like, you guys want lunch? And you guys want, what are you guys right. doing? You know, we're going to Starbucks. I'll pick you something <laughs> up. And then they're like, there's a, there was a concert for all the Cisco people. And it was Foo Fighter and Weezer. So I never seen either of those bands, wow. which is rare for me yeah. being in the industry i've seen damn near everybody 15 times and uh and yeah we all got to go they invited the whole crew which is just fantastic for cisco networking yeah oh, for, okay, yeah cool. and yeah. uh and it was petco park i remember wow. they were going across yeah. the street to petco park yeah and i yeah, like that, that park fun. it's a fun park yeah, yeah it's beautiful yeah, yeah it's beautiful it's great city man san diego is awesome yeah, I really like San Diego, man. Uh, what we just we just went down uh, south as well to go right before the pandemic. We were in Monterey as mm-hmm. well, going mm-hmm. to the uh, aquarium out there and just strolling up and on the pier. It's just Southern California is beautiful, man. It is when there's no fires. Yeah, as long <laughs> as you don't go to L.A. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate L.A., man. It's uh, so bad. It really. I is. drove. I would drove through through there. Um, we went to. Uh, was back in November last year, so November almost a year ago, we went to um, the Chinese Grauman's Chinese Theater for uh, 
uh, the Frozen musical for my oh, daughter wow. and my, you know, my nieces and nephews, you know, they're all under 10. So they went to so- go see that. And man, the last time I was in LA driving through LA doing, you know, taking, uh, being a roadie for my friend's bands. And when I was in high school and just out of high school, you know, going to all the venues, loading gear and everything. Ugh. I didn't really notice it then, but like, I, I kind of noticed it because when I drove in there this last year, there was just tons and tons of, of homeless camps everywhere. It oh, was yeah. kind of disheartening, man. It was like sad to see like every overpass, every underpass, there's just tons of people out there. And it's, it's sad. Yeah, it's really dirty now, man. Now it's gotten worse and yeah. worse and worse, and they're not really doing anything about it. Yeah. And that's really the big problem. And they're just like, let's make the houses another million dollars a piece. Right. It's just like, man. that's going to solve problems, right? right? Yeah, no one can afford anything in there. I it's mean, insane. San Francisco's worse. Yeah. I, was out, I was out in San Francisco a couple of years ago, and it was doing some jobs out there, and it was just like people are saying, you know, that you got people shitting on the streets. I, I can we curse? Is yeah, you can curse all you want. Fuck shit, piss, and cunt, baby. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I was go, just going back to my hotel room, and um, after uh, like about a six-hour day, you know, I got there late in the afternoon, about 4, 4 p.m. from a flight. Just six hours at the venue that I was working on to do some, um, you know, upgrades for them, and got back to the hotel, walking in, and just people just shitting on the streets. Like, what the hell is going on? Last time I was oh. in San Francisco, I was like, 12 yeah so before and it was you know i'm a little kid i don't notice these things and i don't i really same thing again i don't really think it was happening when i was 12 but obviously there was some homelessness when i was you know that old but uh i'm 36 now so dude yeah it's 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 changed a lot in the last 20 years basically yeah when you're a kid you're just going to fisherman's wharf Mm -hmm. and enjoying everything and then sourdough bowls and yeah yeah Yeah, that was good stuff yeah it's going to golden gate like tons of stuff 151,000 homeless people in California yeah, right bad. now. That's uh, this is 2019 estimates. It's got to be way worse than that. But I find one for 2020. Oh, yeah. I don't even know if they're going to have them for 2020. That's, like, yeah, it's probably just too out of control at this point. They're just no one's doing anything about the problem out there, and uh, just people are just losing their houses left and right. Now that the moratoriums are up, man, right. I just feel f- terrible for those people. Yeah, I mean it's the terrible. people that are losing their houses too. It's not like. It's not like they don't have a job too. It's like they're making, you know, making okay, maybe like fifty or sixty grand or something. But yeah. like, their house is like three grand a month or something, and it's, it's just insane. It's like six hundred square feet or something like that, something tiny, and it's ridiculous prices. Oh yeah, it's all of those tech companies out there that have all the businesses and, you know, it, driving up prices locally. It's going to change, obviously, with you know, the oh, yeah. positive side with Corona. At least I'm not saying that Corona is good, but positive side is just showing that hey you don't necessarily have to be in a city to work like a lot of remote working now oh yeah and it's gonna i mean that those kind of those kind of housing prices are going to collapse in on themselves i mean that can't sustain it can't just keep getting more and more and more expensive while i mean they have been doing certain things about minimum wage a lot of places have minimum wage over the ten dollar an hour mark right closer to the twenty dollar an hour mark which is really where it needs to be uh and uh and then it's just, but it's still not enough. You know, nobody's going to be able to afford these half million, multi million dollar homes right. everywhere. And it's like, it's one thing to have, like, you go to La Jolla or something like that down mm-hmm. in San Diego, right? And it's right. like, of course, this is beautiful and this is where all the millionaires live. But right. it's like, those housing prices just span way outside of those areas. And, yeah. and I mean, I, I used to live in San Diego, I was saying, and we, we had a, uh, one bedroom, little apartment. It was super ghetto. Um, you know, I had to like, I had to go do my laundry outside the apartment. They didn't have washer and dryer right. even in the apartment complex. You know, oh, you not even to, they didn't have like a communal one. No, not even a communal one in the wow. apartment. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it was just a really small, shitty place. And that was as much as this house is. This wow. is a four yeah. bedroom house, seventeen hundred square feet. It was identical uh, cost of living to to have a little tiny apartment. Right. And we were, and and that was when I was nineteen. You know, I was working at friggin' Walmart. Right. And, uh, and so it, it was me and my girl and her brother and my best friend all in this one bedroom apartment, Dang just to man. afford That's like tiny. to survive. You know, <laughs> it was brutal. Yeah. I don't, it's it, just it's not realistic. Right. To try and like come up from that. Yeah. I mean, one good thing about out here is cost of living is way way better than it is in California, at least. I mean, in most cities. 
oh, for yeah. a major for a major city of the state of Nevada. You know, the biggest city in the state. Yeah, cost of living isn't isn't horrible. I mean, it's it's been going up. It has. I, I mean, we me and my wife got a got into our house at the right time. Uh, it was two thousand one, so we've been almost in there for almost ten years. Yeah, and um, you know, we got in right kind of at the at the bottom of the of the dip and. I mean, our our mortgage is under a thousand a month, and it's a, a four bedroom. I'm sorry, three wow. bedroom house. So good for you, man. Three bedroom, two and a half bath, brand new build too. So it wasn't like a, a used one or anything. I mean, used, oh, but dude. you know what I mean. It, oh, yeah. we, we got to build it from scratch, and you come into a 15 year old house, and it's like, oh, I just bought this house, and the air conditioner's gone, right, and I got to right. put a new roof on. It's right. like, fuck. I, it's crazy just thinking about it. Like, I, man, I've always been in this house for a decade already, and it still seems like it's my new house. You know, that's so great. So, I mean, we're pretty close. To, I didn't realize how close you were to me. So we're we're just on the other side of South Point. So, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Cactus, we be barbecuing, Cactus homie. Dean Martin is the cross street. So nice. That's a nice area, man. And you got you got Highlands. something over there. Yeah. For instance, you're paying under a grand. Oh, you yeah. Lucky son yeah. of a bitch. Well, it's it's weird because it we're ain't under a grand now. No, no, it's not under a grand now. I mean, where we're at is like we're, I think we're like. A quarter of a mile from the um, dividing line or the the subdivision of Southern Highlands. Okay. So we're not in Southern Highlands, but we kind of are, you yeah. know. But we're not paying the Southern Highlands price, so we don't have to pay the um, the monthly. I forgot what they're calling it, like the development fee for the for the region or oh, the area. Yeah. I don't remember what it was called. It was like a sit and lid thing. Like I when I was doing all that stuff, the mortgage, like all the paperwork, I was kind of just phased it out like all right, how much is this going to cost me a month that's all i really want to know that's all you really care about yeah. right can so, i yeah, afford we've this got, or not yeah we've gotten in there good man and we're our price is more than doubled already so yeah it's been good that's awesome it's it's already doubled for you huh over uh, that's yeah. fantastic yeah, i think we're at like 125 percent or something right now dude congratulations yeah. that's the whole reason you good get equity, into real man. estate in the yeah. first place yep yeah. man that's that's so good to hear, man. Yeah, good timing. It really was. I mean, before that, we were in a apartment over off, uh, over by um, Sunset Station, uh, where Sunset and Sunset intersect, basically oh, yeah. over the, behind that uh, Smith's uh, Shopping Center. Yeah. And you know, we had a little one bedroom apartment, me and her, and it was, it was pretty cheap when we first got in there. It was like four hundred and eighty dollars a month. And then by the time we got out, they raised the rent to like six hundred. So yeah. I'm like, it's like, oh, six hundred for this isn't worth it. <laughs> but I'm like, but you know, it's looking back on it now. Like we we checked in on it um, last year, and the price was like eight hundred and something for the same apartment that we were in. Yeah, it's like, man, that price has gone up. It goes up big time. We're mm-hmm. um, we have to, we're we're having a new a new place as well. The landlord's selling this place, and since we've been unemployed for seven eight months or whatever like our credit and everything's good but we can't get the loan because they're like well you haven't made any money in the last two months so we're not going to give you a loan and uh, it's totally understandable you know i mean the bank's got a it's a business it's not a charity yep and so we're looking to find a new place to rent and we're like holy shit rent prices have gone through the roof just since the pandemic happened even like it is really out of control out there man I haven't looked so that you're you're more of an expert at that than I am. Yeah, it's it was We've surprising. Lucky, so yeah, it was surprising. But we're hoping to uh, maybe rent a place and hold out because I mean it, it's a lot of people are expecting it to crash again uh, with everything that's going on. Everybody losing their houses and right. getting screwed over. You know, not things not coming through from the government and everything that are supposed to happen. So if it does crash again, hopefully we'll be in a position to where we can prove some income six months down the line and, right, and right. score on a house like you, you were able to. Yeah. So what did you pick that up in like, uh, what was it, like 2010-ish, 2009-ish when the housing um, market totally collapsed? Yeah, it was 2000, it was, uh, we, our official move-in was December 14th, 2010, or no, sorry, 2011. Oh, right in the middle of it. Yeah, so we got in there and um, you know, we, that was when we moved in. So our, we had one, well, half a month of, of, uh, you know, in the house in 2011. And then the, the first full year was 2012. And, um, yeah, it was nice to be in that area. It's a, it's a nice spot where it's oh, yeah. accessible to, you know, the freeway and coming home from tr- taking, going to California to visit family, coming back, you know, you don't have to drive all the way to Henderson anymore. It's like, you know, that's not really a long drive anyways. Being yeah. from Southern California, growing up for 25 years, going 
out here and it's like, oh, I can get anywhere out here within half an hour, no problem. That is one there's of my favorite things basically about Basically no traffic. I mean, when there's traffic, it's like, oh, you have to wait an extra five minutes. It's, yeah. not like, no, it's not like you have to wait an extra five hours. Yeah. You know. Like L.A., man, even at 3 in the morning, you are crawling on the freeway, like foot off the gas, and you're still tapping the right. brake pedal. Right. And it's like, man, Depending where, where you're are all on, these man, people the, coming the from? The 405, the 605, like 91s, like all of the freeways, um, they're always busy. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand how many, that many people are living in that amount of space. Right. Like, at least you have, like, uh, what, New York, but everyone's walking because it's like right. a tighter city. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of public transportation systems that work really well out there and everything. It's not like California where it's just like everyone's got to yeah. be stuck on the freeway. Anywhere you go, Everyone it's drives 90 in minutes. California. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I remember when I was when I was going to, to college there, like, you know, I got there early for – for baseball and everything at like 6 a.m. We did our workouts five days, five days a week getting there from, I used to live in Corona, which is basically halfway between LA and San Diego. I kind of tell that to people that they don't know where it's at. Um, it's funny that it's, I used to live in Corona and the coronavirus is going on right now. So <laughs> it's like have a Corona in Corona while it's during Corona is what my family's doing. Cause they still live out there. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I had times where it took me, four hours to get to my school that was literally about half or 30 miles from where I lived. And it, it took about four hours sometimes. Usually it takes about an hour and it's, you know, to go 30 miles. So it, I mean, go 30 miles out here. It'll, well, it'll take you 25, 30 minutes, maybe 35. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, tr signals. And if there's a little bit of traffic or doing construction, most of the traffic's from construction. They're always doing construction out here. Yeah, they always they're fixing it up. We got, um, I think we won one of those um, federal lotteries where they were like, certain cities are gonna, you know, we're randomly selected to get a ton of money to fix their roadways. Mm -hmm. And I think we were one of the cities that were able to get that. Yeah. So that's why they're always just rebuilding the freeways, rebuilding right. the freeways. It, it's ridiculous seeing the stuff they rebuild though, like the decorations they do is like why is yeah. is that really needed i it's mean it's not but it it's looks nice. okay <laughs> i mean but do i really care what the side of the freeway looks like <laughs> having yeah. these you know huge like broncos or, or i don't remember what they were like the they got they got road runners out there yeah, too right like they had the 15 to 15 interchange you got all those like metal animals on the side of the road you know yeah. sculptures which they look cool you know but I guess they look cool. They look okay. But, I mean, does, does it really needed? It's like, is that yeah. where the money could have gone? It couldn't have gone something else? Yeah, for real. Tons of potholes out here. You can have fixed any of those. <laughs> but I guess if the, you know, they're getting the federal money, that's only going to be doing the interstate stuff anyway. So. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, the, the shit they did at the 15 is totally weird. It took me a second to get used to that. Like up, up uh, uh, by, the, like, the, the Charleston area yeah. towards yeah. the spaghetti bowl. Yeah. All those little off-ramp yeah. shoots that are happening every which way and yeah traveling south on the yeah. 15 and if you're in the far left lane you're making an exit instead of being like in a carpool lane or whatever yeah you're jumping off onto the yeah. charleston I think, yeah right there. yeah that charleston exit yeah yeah and then they have you, you saw the, the digital speed limit signs and like how, oh, yeah. how can the speed limit change like yeah it changes daily <laughs> yeah it's just like it, whatever it, they feel like making it that day because right, if they're, we're doing construction uh, so yeah there's construction slower. so you got to go slower it's like well the speed limit doesn't change no matter where you're at. Yeah. Obviously, the traffic is going to slow down. That doesn't make the speed limit change. But yeah. That just seems weird to me. It makes it easier for them to uh, to take our money and give us tickets. Right. You know? they can, <laughs> oh, you're going on the speed limit. They can justify some more jobs. So not only is your fine this amount, it's also doubled because yeah. it's construction. Yeah. <laughs> you get that money out of people's pockets, right. especially like, uh, you know, of course, it's a tourist town, so they're getting that out-of-state money go into the police department right and, you know the government and everything mostly california people driving 95 and yeah in the 70 <laughs> those guys going, going down uh going down the pass mountain pass into state line man those people are flying oh dude you're not lying i get um i get on right here like cactus or the silverado ranch mm -hmm. and all those people coming in from california just hauling ass past me as they come into the city right it's crazy man and i'll be doing 70 miles an hour on the freeway and they'll just <laughs> I've kind of, I've, uh, my rule of thumb now, just to try and avoid tickets. I used to speed as a kid, but, yeah. um, I just take the speed limit at 10%. That's kind of where I go. <laughs> so 70, I go in 77, maybe 78, you yeah. know, 
I always set my cruise control so I don't have to worry about it. Like, if they're going to pull me over for going 10% over, then so be it. Like, I'm not speeding, speeding. I know there's people always going faster than me out here. Yeah. They're going to pull them over before me. That's my mentality. Yeah, I never really gotten messed with out here. Uh, I recently, we were driving to go camping and the new Subaru that we got, mm-hmm. and that thing hauls ass. And I don't even realize I'm speeding because it's, it's a new newer vehicle. And All-wheel it, drive? Yeah, yeah, and so it just, it's it's cooking, and I'm just driving, and I'm like, I feel completely stable. I'm not, I don't think I'm speeding. Right. And it's like, you're doing like 90 miles an hour multiple times. <laughs> right. Angela's reaching over going, slow the fuck down, man. What are you doing? <laughs> and then, I, of course, I got us a ticket. I got a speeding ticket. But uh, thankfully, uh, you know, the cop was a good dude, and he just hooked me up at traffic school. Um, right. And uh, I was able to not get totally boned by that ticket. Right. Um, so now I'm like, I'm fresh out of that when we just came, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so now I'm now I'm the guy doing five miles under the speed limit because it's, <laughs> it's fresh in my mind. Right. Well, that, that's why I'm, I always use my cruise control because it's like, if I if I don't use it, then I know I'm gonna be going faster than what I need to be, and I notice it sometimes. And, you know, when I don't use it, and like, oh, I'm going too fast. I need to slow down, put on cruise control, and just let it do its thing. Yeah. And, you know, my uh, my wife's car is a you know it's a Toyota Rav4, and it has the automatic um, cruise control speed reduction thing, so it has the radar and everything. And oh, nice. When the car gets too close, it'll slow down for you. You don't have to slow down yourself. So that's pretty cool, especially for long trips. When you're driving to Southern California to visit family, it's, you know, nice to set it and kind of take your feet off the pedals for a bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, the automatic braking features and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Like, man, uh, at first you're just like, I don't want this car just slamming on the brakes out of nowhere on me it does it sometimes so i'm yeah. like kind of conscious of it but yeah. you, know, you can tell if some if you know someone's gonna cut you off i'm like i'm ready for it and i just slow down already oh yeah but you know it's uh it's cool for the most part you know crazy technology that's been around for a while but it just really got implemented for something that's affordable for most people yeah it's uh dude once it saves your ass once or twice you're just like oh i'm glad that thing's on here right because people are idiots and they'll just uh, one of the things that I like about it is like, I'll be backing out in a parking lot. And of course oh, yeah. people are like, not, not when I'm driving on the road, you know, they're All like, right. people can't back out in front of me <laughs> and they just slam on their gas pedal oh, in a yeah. parking lot. So you can't get out of your parking spot and the car will just stop. Yeah. And you're just like, what? And boom, you see a guy shoot past you. And that was going to be you getting T-boned a second right, ago because right. this guy has no fucking patience. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our, that one doesn't have that, but it has the, it, it alerts you at least. It's oh, like, yeah. It, you know, the rear cross traffic alert. So it just it starts beeping at you and just saying, hey, hey there's a car coming. Um, I don't think it has a pedestrian one, but you can basically, you know, I'm always looking around for pedestrians anyways. But, yeah, like park, driving out of my, my driveway and I got people on my street that are just trying to get out. And, like, I look. <laughs> I always look to my right because I don't have a lot to my left. Yeah. And then I look around and, like, I start to back out. And, you know, in that two seconds that I don't look to my right, there's a car coming. Like, yeah, I just looked and you weren't there and now you're there. Like, and of course, how fast are you going? They're not going to, they're not going to stop and let you no. actually like exist in their world. No, they're going to, they're going to haul ass this and cut my you space. off. What are you, yeah. how dare you get in my space? You're just in their way. <laughs> right? what, how dare you, John, right? be in that person's way? I know. Yeah. That's, that's really ridiculous. I've been way better about being a calm, patient driver. Right. And, uh, cause I, I I got a little bit of a road rage going on, you know, and uh, I think a lot of us do for some, uh, you know, not not necessarily a huge amount, but you know, a lot of us have some road rage in us. Oh yeah, just like man, why are you being an asshole? Just quit cutting me off, quit cutting all these people off. Oh, and yeah. I, you know, I've I've I used to if someone cut me off, I used to kind of go around and be like, what are you doing? Like sometimes flip them off or you know <laughs> ride up their ass i'm like no i don't do that anymore especially when i have a kid now too it's like i ain't gonna do that like, yeah especially with a kid in the yeah. car and you never know what people out here what they're if they're strapped or not or if they're gonna it's get angry if you honk at them. yeah if you you know you i the other day i was just driving up uh um charleston to towards uh, red rock and after uh going to grab some dinner and it's this guy just cuts off cuts me off like just yeah. i was going the speed limit going like 40 and it was a 45 i was speeding up to 45 and guy in the left lane was tailgating the guy in front of him i was almost up to where 
you know, he couldn't get over and he just cut me off. So I just gave him a little flash. I didn't even honk. I just flashed. And then he just slammed yeah. on his brakes right in front of me. I'm like, yeah, Come fucking on, asshole. Man. What the hell? And then he just sped off and then did it to another person. And yeah. this guy in, in the truck, you know, he cut off a truck. This guy wasn't having any of it. Like, that's what I used to do as, you know, a younger. I'm like, he started tailgating him, flashing him. And he's in a hot raised truck. So he's probably like just blinding the guy in his rearview mirror. <laughs> and he just kept cutting people off, swerving in and out. And the guy was in a Mercedes. I'm like, well. That like, guy's going to get an accident real soon. Right. Yeah. It's like, you have an $80,000 car. I have a, you know, $30,000 car, or $20,000 car, or, you know, yeah. a little beater that's like five grand. You're like, <laughs> do you want to get in a wreck with this $5,000 car or, you know, whatever someone has? Yeah. It's like, quit being an asshole, man. It's like, you're not going to get anywhere quicker by yeah. cutting everyone off. Yeah. Like my, my brother always says, you're going to get there. When you're supposed to get there. Right. No sooner, no later, man. So just enjoy the music and sh stop. That's very Gandalf of him. Yeah. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's wiser than uh, his age. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, man. Now I had a guy, uh, my favorite one is those fucking idiots that'll ride your, uh, ride your ass on the freeway. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I'm doing 70 on the freeway, man. You know? And so if you're going to ride my ass, they just ride and honk and flash and it's right. just like foot just comes right off the gas and we're like. Go around me. Yeah. You better get on it yeah. because I'm enjoying this now. Right. Uh, this is fun for me. Yeah. Right? I'm laughing at how stressed you're going to get as we are now doing 50 miles an hour in the fast lane. 45. 40. Oh, man. 35. You got to be pissing people And off. he's just like, oh, there's a line <laughs> of cars behind him honking at him. And uh, and I'm just like, oh, you're going to go around me or are you going to stay behind me? Oh, it's hard to go around me on the freeway whenever we're doing 35 now. Right. You know, and it's just like, but I'm not, I'm going to wait till my car stops. Or you can stop riding my ass. That's an, also right. an option. If you haven't figured out what's happening yet, right? Right. That, that I'm fucking with you. Right. Because <laughs> you're being a dick. What gets me is, man, when I, I, I generally, I don't stay in the fast lane. Yeah. Unless I'm passing someone like that. That's kind of how I grew up, like. I, I keep right except to pass, which is, we see a lot of those signs driving in California, keep right except to pass, which is what you're supposed to do, really. Yeah. And, you know, I took my, I, put, I, put my, I see someone coming up on my ass, like, really fast, so I put my blinker on, and then they just go over and pass me on the right instead of letting me, like, dude, I just put my blinker on, and you just passed me. Like, I was getting over for you. Yeah. I was going to be polite, but no, you still had to go around and pass me, you know? Like, you know, that's illegal in Germany and, like, European countries. To oh. pass on the right at all, you get a ticket like that. That's like a dick move. And they love writing people tickets for that. Well, don't they already pass on the right? Because they're on the... Or I mean, sorry, the, the opposite, opposite side. side. So, the, yeah. so yeah, what the left, basically. Yeah, passing on the... Yeah, passing the... On the you can't pass not, in a slower lane, basically. You, yeah, you're supposed to go on the... You're supposed right. to go on the fast lane. Wow. And uh, yeah, like a, I think that's one of the rules on the autobahn. Uh, well, that makes for sense, sure. especially on and there. Then, um, and then I think it's other. I know Germany does it for sure, and then uh, some of the other countries do it, I believe, as well. But they just like it's the, you got to be polite on the road, you right. should, because you should be polite on the road. I mean, there's never a moment in your life when you're more dangerous than when you have this multi-ton vehicle yep. hauling ass at these high speeds, and uh, and. And then you're going to add your rage to that, and yeah. you're going to add this aggressive, these aggressive tendencies. And it's like, now you're just a lethal weapon out to kill somebody. That's right. literally what you are. Right. And you're just trying to go, uh, what are you doing? You're going to lunch? You want to be there 30 seconds earlier? Right. You're going to kill somebody. Yeah. What That's I don't get crazy. is when you, have you seen those people driving the smart cars that are going like 90 on the freeway? <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, you're they're in a, a golf trap. cart, man. Like, it's an it's an overblown golf cart. That's what I always say. It's like, yeah. that thing's tiny. It's going to crush up like a sardine yeah. can. It's like, if you get, if you get a truck, or you pass a truck that has the, you know, the wind turbulence that's going by, I'm like, it's going to knock you over. Yeah. Like, that thing's so tiny. And you're going 90. You're going, you're crazy. <laughs> I'm going to get away from you because you're going to crash. <laughs> it's like the wheelbase is so small on that thing. I don't get how people can do that. Like, there's, they're just dumb and they're rude. And they don't yeah. they don't think about anybody but themselves. It's the the world is in my way mentality as opposed to I am part of this world and I right. I don't really matter that much. You know, right. like you gotta you gotta realize that things are gonna happen with or without you. And uh and fucking people just refuse to accept that. They're yeah. just like, No, this is this is my world, man. Right. And uh yeah, it's it's super apparent. Super apparent out there. Yeah, definitely. 
fucking uh I always like to let the trucks in, like the big semi trucks. Oh yeah. Like, dude, those down. guys are man. Yeah. I, it's crazy what those guys go through. Like just thinking about they're they're driving all the time and all of the assholes that they have to deal with every single day. Like <laughs> there's gotta be at least those guys are probably getting cut off twenty to fifty times a day easily. Oh yeah. And like they don't under, people that cut them off don't understand. Like, you know, this guy cannot stop on a dime. Like, <laughs> it's like it's a you're it's screwed. a freaking freight truck right behind you, and you're cutting this dude off. Like, he's gonna try and slow down. Yeah, maybe he won't. It's like, yeah. well, I'll just run this guy over. Like, yeah. you know, he doesn't have a choice. Yeah, momentum. Yeah, it's just basic physics. Yeah, I mean, I was just one uh, one year from uh, uh, I think it was two years ago or three years ago. We were doing a show up at EDC. Um, supplying the sound system for it. And I was transporting back the sound system in just a, uh, I think it was like a 16 or 18 foot box truck. And it was just full of the gear. You know, we had, it was probably a good 2,000 to 3,000 pounds worth of gear in the box truck. And just driving back from the speedway to our shop, going south on the 15, like people cut me off. And like, I'm not in a huge semi truck, I'm in a box truck. And like, I'm going 55, 60. And man that thing takes forever to slow down oh yeah it's like i can't imagine those guys in the big semis going across the country with that stuff every day that's a hell of a job oh yeah and they'll be out of a job soon too which is a shame because there's a lot of hard-working people that rely on that and they like that lifestyle where i don't, um, I don't know how soon that'll be but yeah potentially yeah, yeah. i mean like like a decade something like that you 20 30, that soon? 20 35 at the most uh, i mean I yeah haven't you i mean dude, I've, CES, been, I've been i've seen it yeah have, like, like whenever you're in ces yeah. i go and the the autonomous vehicle uh regulations and are, right. it, they are sorry the um, inventions and the new technologies that are coming out for that stuff are just getting so advanced right and like they're all over your car right your car can parallel park itself and um i saw a fantastic new sensory array that um, they just had it pointed at the crowd. Mm -hmm. And as you walk by, there's a big screen with the sensory array seeing, and it locks on to every single person. And it's like the crowd at CES. It's thousands right. of people. Right. And it has a box around each individual person, and it recognizes each individual person as a threat. That's scary. And you can see it, and as you get closer to it, you start turning red. You know, you start out green, and it's like it was, it was super impressive. And, uh, and that was one of the big things was, like, um, was the pedestrians, right? Because mm -hmm. that... that Right, idiot jumped in front of a uh, jumped in front of a car on the freeway that was a self driving vehicle, and everyone's like, "Oh, what are you supposed to do? You know, people are getting killed by self driving cars." And it's like, right. "Well, you stay the fuck out of the road, first of all." Yeah, you know, yeah, like that's uh, who if someone was driving that car and you jumped in front of them, would they be able to stop? No, it's the same. You know, they have faster uh, response times than a human being does at this point. Right. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know if it'll be that soon. Maybe it will. Yeah, well, technology. See, I know the technology will probably be there by yeah. that time, but I don't. I the mean, regulations, the regulations, right? and like, I mean, there's, uh, you know, there's there's these large trucking unions, which it's like that they employ millions of people, man. There's a lot of truckers. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't know how many. Maybe it's not millions, but I know there's. It has to be millions. At least half a million. I mean, there's probably yeah, there's probably millions. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's got to be at so least like ten trucks. million truckers out there, right, on yeah. any given day. Easily, I mean, like, okay, and then that, that that's yeah, truck drivers are there. I mean, that's that's a huge part of the commerce for the country too. Like, you can't the country would not be able to do its business if it didn't have truckers. Like it's it's really an essential job. And three point five million. Wow. That's yeah. Well, fewer than I thought. I think there'd be more, but I guess that makes sense. Yeah, it's a lot. That's still that's a, that's lot, a lot of people. people. Yeah, I mean that's. What that's one percent of the population, of yeah, the population right yeah, there, a little over. Yeah, yeah. what is it, three hundred and thirty million right now? Something like that. We'll see what it has with the new, next census. <laughs> right after we lost a bunch of people to uh, the COVID, yeah. so we didn't really lose that many people to the COVID. Relatively speaking, I mean, it's, it's still a lot of people. Two million, two thousand nineteen. Right. So yeah, a little over one percent. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of people, man. It's it a lot is. of jobs. It's a lot, and of they're jobs. well, really good paying jobs too. Like. If you look into it, if you ever wanted to be I, a driver, like I was looking into it because yeah. I don't got a job right now. Yeah. I was like, "What the fuck am I gonna do?" I can go get my CDL, right? But, I mean, there's a have you, there's these little apps that you can do that's just kind of like the uh, you know the food services app where you can transport food, but this time it's, it's just cargo. Oh, okay. So it's like you know Uber Eats, but it's you know basically it's the the Amazon delivery people, but it's not for Amazon. It's for other 
companies. Um, you can like just do delivery services from, you know, picking up something from Home Depot and deliver it to someone's house or, you know, from other businesses and just delivering Bed Bath Beyond, whatever. Hey, someone bought this stuff and they did a home delivery. So they yeah. use this service and... Postmates does it. Yeah, Postmates signed, does it. I yeah. signed up for to drive Postmates, but I was like, oh, the... the I have an old, I have an old '96 Forerunner hmm. that I'm usually driving around, and I was like, I'm gonna drive this thing into the dirt and not right. make enough money to repair it on driving Postmates. Yeah, there was one I found. Let me, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. I was doing it for a bit. I did one, one gig on it, and they call it a gig too, which is funny. Oh yeah, you know, well I mean that's what it is, right? You yeah, know, you're not um, employed after you drop that thing off right. until you get another one. Yeah. So. Uh, where did I put it? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Rody. <laughs> It's oh, called Roadie. <laughs> so it's called Roadie, and you're 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 having a gig. So yeah, yeah. Like um, one of the things I get, um, I was I was starting to research investing in robotics and and eventually nanorobotic technologies because that'll be the future. Um, is this Miso Robotics? It's um, it's a fast food robot that is going to replace everybody where's the fucking robot at hang on a second i'll find the robot there it is boom so yeah this this fast food robot is uh it can do everything in the essential like the deep fryer and make right. burgers and everything right. like that. this video sucks hang on i'll find a better video well you can kind of see yeah what it is it's um, going to be replacing a lot of those workers which is yeah like you can see here there's not a, necessarily good but it's going to happen Automation, these, man. These things here, yeah, it's all automated, uh, and there's just, you know, tens of thousands of those restaurants out there that are uh, doing this kind of employment, and eventually it'll just be like one person per McDonald's, and just be right. the manager, and right. you go up and you push. Have you seen the? Have you seen the? Uh, the self-order screens where you just go up before, and you, yeah, 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 you yeah. just go and order your food and you pay everything on like a little ATM on the side. Right. And then they just go, hey, here's your food. And that'll all be done through an automation process. And it'll just be like one person that knows how to fix the robots and maintain the robots as opposed to like being a fast food restaurant right. employee. You're right. like a technician. Uh, huh. And that and that's happening in all like uh, the Amazon warehouses, right? There's only... There's like so many robots running the warehouse, yeah, yeah. and there's just a, there's a lot fewer people for a massive size warehouse. It's still gonna have to have someone for like the drive-through taking orders at least. Yeah, right. I mean, essentially, maybe I mean, like that's one person get, at the window. Yeah, I mean, that's that's thinking of how a restaurant or you know fast food restaurant works. You got what? You got two people at the counter. You got someone in the drive-through. Then you got two or three cooks in the back, right? Yeah. Maybe a manager overseeing it all. And it's like it's, the people at the counter and the people in the yeah. back, those people aren't going to have jobs soon. I know. That's, and, that's, and that's, that's a crazy. lot of jobs. I yeah. wonder how many fast food workers there are in the. Oh, man, there's going to be. Man. There's got to be tens of millions of fast food workers. I mean, how many McDonald's is there in the United States? You know? Dude, that's a good question, too. I mean, each McDonald's employs, what, like 10 to 15 people, probably? Maybe more? It's about the same as trucks. 3.7 million fast food employees. Wow, and uh, how many McDonald's? That seems buy? small. That's just the United States, though, right? Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, even even in the United States, that seems small. Um, well, yeah, I guess so, right? Uh, freaking uh, 2018. It says there's almost 14,000 in the United States by 2018. Wow. Uh, here's 2020. It says yeah, about the same. 14,000. Yeah, about 14, just under 14,000. Uh, fast food uh, or McDonald's alone, right? In the U.S., that's yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, and uh, yeah, like, but with the uh, with the inventions of these robotics technologies, man, it's it's um, that's why I liked. Um, I mean, he was kind of ridiculous, but uh, what was his name Andrew Yang? Mm -hmm. But he he was he was way ahead of his time. Uh, and people thought it was absurd, but he was going for the, the UBI uh, stuff. Yeah, just yeah. basic income. And it, it makes sense at a point where we're not at that point yet. We're not there yet. No, no. no. He's no. way too. He's he's jumping the gun on that right. big time. Right. But it would solve like the homeless problem, right? Like I mean, maybe if I you if yeah, I mean I mean if it's universal basic income, it right. would need to be at least enough for like a studio apartment and bills and food. Right. Uh, and uh, and so it's like if you're just giving that to everyone who has a U.S. birth certificate, that's a lot of fucking money. But it's like maybe we don't build nine aircraft carriers you know how many, like we have I, last i, I checked we have yeah, yeah let me see because uh, uh 
I, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm we can off like and put on that about money, that. Put that money back into the fucking people. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, it's just like, it'll be inevitable because the homeless population will keep increasing if we don't do something about it as this, as this transition occurs where it's like, oh, well, now we need one employee for every store because everything's right. done by robots, but we still need a human element. Right. Uh, and then like, yeah, the same, like trucks, the, the delivery services, all that shit is like, man, there's a, a lot of that stuff. Yeah. That makes get it, turned into robot jobs. I think UPI makes sense in like the, the Star Trek universe where there's replicators right. and you don't have to worry about food. You yeah. Know? You don't need it. Yeah. Even then, you know, yeah. and, uh, and like he transporters, I, I read a lot of like Ray Kurzweil and Paul Diamandis and Michio Kaku and stuff like that. And, uh, and they talk about as it all, it all like kind of comes together all at once with all like the 3d printers becoming mm -hmm. a regular thing like like every everybody has a microwave in their house right? right and it'll be like right next to your microwave you'll have a 3d printer that that can print on maybe the molecular level and hopefully at some point the atomic level right uh and all of a sudden you just download all your clothes for the summer you right download your food that'd be cool yeah and uh, yeah. and that'll solve we're a not, lot of that we're not problems. really even close to being there yet but. no 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 we still have like i said it's like 2035 is really the, the close estimates for all that stuff to really start being implemented. So we're like 15 years out from that kind of shit. But it's like things that we you know, really got to start taking yeah, into it, consideration I mean, now so that it doesn't just hit us in the ass really right, hard. Right. It'll happen eventually. I just, I don't think it'll be that soon. No, no. I mean, it's, it's, it is one weird thing seen with uh, what's happened with Corona. It's a, you know, you got the people that are, that uh, it's, it's weird, man. Like the whole, I don't want to, I don't want to get into politics too much, but it's like, it's, uh, you got the people that are making the unemployment that were working before. And then they have the extra amount that they were getting on top of it for however many months that just ended. Yeah. And you know, when the, the, where they were working before was like, Oh, you know, we're ready to reopen. You, we come on, come on back to work. We were going to rehire you. Like, no, I'm making more on unemployment. Like, yeah, that's one thing. It's like the incentive but With that's UBI illegal won't too, be there. right? If the if you know, eventually they'll find out that they got offered eventually, yeah, a but, job, and then they didn't yeah, take it, and right. then it's like, well, we need that unemployment back. Those people don't understand that. Right. It's like, well, that's the thing is like they don't understand you, that you owe the government that right. money back. Right. Um. That's one. Of, that's like that's a felony. Right. <laughs> You're stealing money, man. Yep. <laughs> that's taxpayer money. Yeah. You know, that's. There I mean, that, it, that I get it. it. Eventually, it'll be like that. But like, I, yeah, I don't think it, it makes sense to a point. Like. I think UBI would make sense if you get rid of all the other, you know, uh, incentive programs that are out there. Yeah. It's like everyone gets this flat amount, but there's no, you know, there's no food stamps. There's no any of the other stuff. But then it'd have to be, you know, obviously it'd have to be a certain amount to cover all that, but you can't have all the other incentives with it. Yeah. Yeah, so no, it has that. can't be, be this like, plus this plus this plus this, you know. Exactly. And then it becomes. It replaces it see a really complicated problem right. of actually establishing all these things. And yeah. now people are going to have to come off of WIC and come off of food stamps and come off right. of welfare. And exactly. then here's your new uh, provided income. Right. As, and, uh, and that's a huge transitional thing that no one's ready to start talking about right now. Obviously, I mean, right. every economy's in shambles and the country's falling apart. And, right. you know, everyone's just trying to keep their houses and keep their heads above the water. Man, and, uh, it was crazy, man. Last year was so good. And then dude. just hit... Best year of my life. Best year of my life. Yeah. yeah. Same here. Same for the company I'm working for. Best year of, of the company's life in, you know, since uh, 90, I think they've been around since 99. Yeah. It's best year they've had ever. And, you know, this year was looking to top that. And then March hit. And we mean, out here in Vegas, we were looking to, we we're starting to look around to hire two new guys. And then yeah. middle of March, like, nope, all done. Like everything had up. Just someone just slammed on the brakes and stop the whole train yeah and it's like say what you want about fucking trump's crazy ass i mean he's a moron but his economy was oh, i yeah. mean i never thrived better in anybody's economy like th those were the best three years i ever had financially yep. i was just boom just going up 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 until the pandemic hit yeah and uh and i yeah i mean that the proof's in the fucking pudding on that guy's economy it's it's amazing and yeah, yeah i mean it's it's uh I remember who I'm trying to remember who said it was one of the YouTube guys, but he's like, "Yeah, Trump's an asshole." Yeah, but he's my he asshole. Yeah, he's our asshole. <laughs> yeah, he's an asshole for us. Yeah, solving <laughs> solving a lot of problems, man. He's a he's he's says a lot of dumb fucking shit. Yeah, 
but damn man yeah the, his it's crazy with what's great. what yeah. he's done with the va was great what he's oh, yeah. done now he's attacking the pharmaceutical industries all the stuff he did against china and like he's fixing that he's bringing factories work back to the states yeah yep. it's, it's pretty incredible check this out i did not know it was this high this is aircraft carriers per country 20 for the united states we have 20 yep. aircraft carriers next next biggest nations are japan and france wow uh, really japan and france yeah like Russia and China really don't have um, a big navy going on. Yeah, they're more army. Yeah, because we just dominate the the ocean, man. We dominate the ocean. We dominate the air. Yeah, it's the, well the trade, uh, all the trade in the. Uh, I mean, you the can, ocean. Yeah, you can say we don't dominate the air, but I mean, technologically, we dominate the air. I think. Oh yeah, but uh, have you seen what India's up to? India's uh, got uh, well, they they have a space program. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that. they have been building fighter jets, and their fighter jets are like ten percent the cost of our fighter jets. Like we're selling them at like a quarter mil, mm -hmm. or sorry, like a, a, a I think it's like two hundred fifty million dollars right. or something like that per jet. And they're like, we'll make the same thing basically for twenty five million dollars. Wow. And then the U.S. get pissed at them. They're like, you can't just do that. You're fucking up our war machine. This is supposed to be our military industrial right. complex, not yours. Yep. Yeah, I mean that's one good thing yeah. with Trump too, man. Like, well, lately at least, it's like trying to get those uh, troops out of the Middle East, and then oh yeah, Congress from both sides is blocking them. Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Well, there's like, a really there's a deeper there's a deeper rooted issue. Oh there. yeah, there's it's, a lot. It's oil. Well, <laughs> They're like that's that's, that's our fucking oil, yeah. man. And uh, and he's just yeah. I mean that's one good thing too is we we basically as a country we've gone off of the Middle East reliance of oil for the most part. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's other issues have come up from it, you know, with, you know, a, a lot of the, the fracking has gotten larger, which a lot of people don't like and other issues. But, yeah, it's, a, it, you know, my uh, I don't like talking about that too much. It's, it's yeah. you know, politics. Is like weird. you look at you look at gas prices. Right. And uh, yeah, that's the what was that? That was like the one measurement that every that you should do for every list. presidency. It's like, it's what was the gas, gas prices price. when they came in? What was the gas prices when they left? Yeah. And I think, I think it was, I think when Trump started in 2016, it was higher than what it is now, right? Do you have the stats in front of you? Yeah, check this out. So here's the gas prices. So we're paying one of the lowest gas prices here. We're at like 67 cents. And uh, it starts going up big time as you start getting into uh, some of the other countries around the world that don't have a presence in uh, these war-torn nations. Where wow. Yeah, it's like... It's the reliance like a, on that uh, pipeline is crazy. Triple, quadruple the price of what we pay for gas. So it's like, uh, I know a lot of like uh, European countries and stuff, it's it's like 9 to $12 a gallon for if, at, the, <sighs> at the pump. Man, and that is crazy. Like, when we just thinking about like, well, hey, when we get to $5 a gallon, that's way too much, and they're at double that. And you look at, uh, here's the good stuff too, Red. You look at Iran, Sudan, you know, all the Middle Eastern countries, mm -hmm. and they're paying... Nothing. Iran's paying. Oh, Venezuela. How's Venezuela paying so low? Uh, and they, Iran they, paying points. They, five cents on the. I think they were. Venezuela was like one of the most oil rich oh, countries on Venezuela the south. Venezuela has their own oil reserves. Yeah. Okay. That's and then why. they messed up. Yeah. The whole economy got messed up because of what happened yeah. over there. But I mean. Yeah, communism, man. It doesn't. It, if we were all robots, right? Like communism would be a great idea but we're not fucking right. robots right. so we can't share the pot equally right. and someone's going to be in control of it and they're going to manipulate the system to their advantage right. and, and communism is like this, gr this open cookie jar that allows you to do that once you're at the top of the right. uh, top of the fucking uh, food chain you can manipulate whatever you want no right. one can even you know do anything about it right and that's, yeah, that's really the problem with it communism works great in on, small scale yeah or on paper well no it yeah. works great in small scale like yeah. you have a group of what like five ten people yeah, they all pull their resources together for betterment of everyone. If everyone agrees, then yeah, it's great. Absolutely. So it was, that was one other thing. It was like when one of these uh, YouTube channels I watch. Are like uh, I think it was I watched Tim Pool here and there. I think he I think he said that like communism works great. You know, uh, I'm a communist when it comes to my family. I'm a socialist when it comes to my local community. Yeah. And then I'm a capitalist when it comes to the entire nation. That's yeah, I mean, that's a good way to put it. We are a, smart. a mixed economy for the most part, you know? Oh, yeah. We're definitely not a purely capitalist no. system anymore. I mean, no. just with the programs we were naming earlier, right. the WIC and the food stamps and right. all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's... Uh, just amount... That those was, are socialist programs, yeah. right? That's, just that's how much society. of that program is going to be done nationally, you know? It, yeah. I think we need to get more back to the, the local community. Like, 
That's really where it's Las supposed Vegas to be. Las Vegas is supposed to take care of Las Vegas, not Washington, D.C. is supposed to take care of Las Vegas or, you yeah. know, whatever it is. Or, you know, why is, uh, you know, where you live in Rhode Island paying for stuff that's happening in, you know, Washington or wherever? Like, I, I get the whole community pool for the whole country, which makes sense. But, yeah, I mean, it's too much reliance on the federal government in my opinion i agree with that it's uh you know people think that they're just gonna have uncle sam bail them out and solve all their problems for them and it's like no you need to be solving your own problems right. in uh in, a, in your own circle and like uh start micro then move to macro as yeah. micro doesn't work like it's like 10 the, ten hey, the part of the an, garden you have access yeah, to you have an issue locally hey start maybe you get help from your family for at first if you can't get help from your family maybe you get help from you know, some community organization or church or whatever you, I mean, I don't go to church, but I know churches are useful for the most part for certain people. Yeah. Um, I mean, if it's, oh, yeah. you know, you that can't get help structure. there, then maybe, you know, then you go to the state or, you know, the local county and then you just, you know, start small and go big. Don't go big. And then yeah. just, you're already starting big and you have nowhere <laughs> else to go if that doesn't work. Yeah. Like, uh, expand your options, man. Yeah, and it's like, uh, and once you start making things federal law, mm-hmm. it's like, well, not everybody wanted that, right? And now you're forcing it down everyone's throat, right? And it's like, it's better to make things like state law or deal with things locally, like yeah, and it makes sense. It's like what the you know, there's different demographics in every state, and within the state, there's different demographics. Yeah, it's like what happens here in Vegas isn't the same that happens in Reno. I mean, it's right. The, you know, Reno is the biggest small little city in the world, but <laughs> you know, they are a little they're different than us. Like their policies should be different because they're in Reno. I yeah. Mean, they're what, like however many miles. I don't know how far Reno is from here. Uh-huh. I know it's like a six hour drive. So that'd be like what? 400 or no, more than that. 500 miles. That's why we got the laptop. Look it up. Look it up. 439 miles. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's a crazy time right now. And I, uh, and a lot of people want some beautiful things, but they want to enforce it in a really negative way. Right. And it's like, you know, you got to have, you got to have balance with this kind of stuff, man. And it's takes, Chew on the other foot policy. time to like get that. there. Yeah. I yeah. like the shoe on the other foot policy. Chew on the other foot policy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, are you, you want to do this, okay? Are you cool if whoever's powers that be, they want to do completely opposite of what you want, but you want to give them the power to do it? Like, yeah. She was on the other foot. Are you okay with that policy? <laughs> if you're not, then you shouldn't be okay with it because you're, you know, your side has power right now. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's like I it hate the what... sides thing. It's like, come on. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Left and right, Democrat, Republican, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's it's really a shitty old uh, antiquated system that needs to really go away. I don't know what it can be replaced with. I mean, there's there's got to be something else, that something that can change with it. I mean, for the most part, uh, I mean, it, it works poorly i mean it's the yeah it's the the best of worst possibilities out there in the world in my opinion you know it's it's an imperfect system but it's the best imperfect system we have yeah nothing's ever gonna there is no real answer right there's never there's not like this perfect solution to all of our problems it's just like what's the best we can come up with today right i mean if everyone thought the same way exactly then yeah you do this one thing it would be great for everyone but yeah there's no. no such thing as a utopia. No. Nope. There's definitely a dystopia. Oh, yeah. But utopia nope. does not exist because it might, if whatever your perfect world is, it's going 100% your way, then the rest of the world is suffering. Right. And uh, and a lot of people can't grasp that simple concept that there is no perfect world for anyone. You yeah. know, if you can't go 100% one person's way. Right. And, yeah, it's uh, it'd be nice to just see the political parties stand down or whatever like i'm not a democrat i'm not a republican there isn't uh we're not going to do a debate based on democrat and republican we're going to do a debate based on the the four presidential candidates that are actually on the ballot right because uh right now those other two people aren't being represented represented at all right i mean i doubt people even know their name yeah i i I saw it and I don't even remember their name. Yeah, like I, I, I know. I if I saw it again, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, that's that person." Yeah, because you got independent you got, and the Libertarian yeah. Party, right? Totally there, underrepresented. Is it a non-Libertarian Green? I don't remember. I think so. Yeah, maybe something like that. Uh, but I I didn't re- I never even heard of these people, right? Mm-hmm. Because I mean, I like I said, I kind of don't really absorb all this information right. a lot. It's uh, 
it's it's overwhelming and it's super negative and it just brings your mood to shit and i'd rather right. not um deal with that as much as possible although when i vote i definitely dive in pretty heavily and i spend several i want to at least know several who I'm days for yeah yeah i, like, I, I research mean, each candidate you got you got your ballot out here and it's like there's Man, what's with all these judges out here? Yeah, so many like, judges, I'm right? Like, How who the heck am I supposed to know what at this guy? Like, uh, I mean, technically, judges aren't supposed to be partisan. Obviously, yeah. I, realistically, they are for the most part. But it's like, well. How am I supposed to know how to who to vote for? Like, I don't even know who any of these people are. Like, I yeah. see billboards. Like, I'm not going to vote off of a billboard. No. Like, no. I, I mean, I try I, and do some research on it, and you know, I got I printed out a, the sample ballot, and I just went through it and I looked up what I could and what I couldn't find on anyone, I'm not going to vote for. I just left it blank. I'm like, oh yeah, I don't know what you represent. Like, I don't know what you think judicially, you know, they're supposed to be independent, obviously, but it's like, I'm not going to vote for you if I don't know anything about you. Yeah. Like one of the major deciding factors for me personally is their uh, internet presence because mm -hmm. it, in this day and age, right, you don't exist without an internet presence. That's where everybody goes for their information. If you're too fucking old to understand that, maybe you shouldn't be right in office. And I'm right. not going to vote for you if that fucking old. You can't grasp this basic concept that everybody's going to look you up on the internet. Right. And uh, and so like I check out their website and I and I see what they're doing and like some people don't have anything. They might have like a Facebook page. Right. And it's like, man, you're really not trying. Right. You're really not trying. And you, you've lost touch with reality because this is the reality. It's 2020. Right. It's not 1979. Yeah. I, w I wonder if that's just has to do with uh, the judges, maybe because they're mm -hmm. not supposed to be political. Maybe they don't have that big of a presence. Yeah. But there are no, there are other ones out there that have tons that oh, are like yeah. just like major, you know, they're they're rallying whoever they can and they have info out there. But. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. For, I mean, that's how I don't remember how many it was. It was it's a huge list. It was like 50 something options for judges out here in Vegas. Huge list. Ridiculously of large. And uh, and yeah, it's like, um, obviously, I mean, I don't know who any of these people are. So it takes a second and I do give it a few days and I take the sample ballot and I spend time and I research every single person. I, I, I Google them and I look them up and I see what they're up to. Yep. And uh and that's uh, and a lot of them do have a pretty solid like presence, and they have like a, a website with the front, and they go, "This is what I've been up to. This is my, you know, this is where I come from, and this is what I've accomplished." And mm -hmm. I like people that do that; they give back to the community. I definitely that's right. those are bonus points if you're like someone who's involved with the community, um, as opposed to like a lawyer who's just been lying in their pockets forever. And right, like, right. You know, um, and so that you know, I do kind of that kind of stipulations uh, about the process, but I, I, I definitely am proud that like i live in a country where we have the the privilege and the opportunity oh, yeah. to vote for all of our representatives yeah we have the and option I, to do it at least yeah and i take it seriously yeah like i vote in the local elections i vote in the federal i, I always make sure to there take needs the time to be to more of an emphasis on the local stuff like yeah that's where it's that's where it all starts where, that's where it all should start and that's where the most change should happen is locally it's like someone that's two thousand miles away shouldn't be making policies that affect you over here you know or oh, yeah. wherever you're at doesn't matter i mean it's like all your policies being made in washington dc that are affecting people in hawaii or alaska like like those people don't care what you think you know <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't care what people think in washington dc out here what's going on in vegas i want to know what's happening in vegas and yeah they don't have to live in 120 degree no, weather and no. survive off the strip you know right. i mean it's like if that freaking strip shuts down this is over. Oh yeah. This is over. Yeah. No one's gonna stay out here and and continue to what? Right. Service the local like. Have you been to this trip lately? No, I stay the fuck away from that. I, shit. I usually stay the stay away. Like even when it was running, I just you know for the most part you're local. You don't go out there unless you have to go to work or something. Yeah, that's where and, I work. Yeah, I mean that's where I work too. And then it's you know I went out. I've been going out there and doing some jobs, and it's starting to pick up again, which is a good sign. But, like, then I'd seen all these stories lately, like, for the last, what, like, month or two, there's been all these, like, shootings and fights happening almost every single day. It is ridiculous. Big time, right? Yeah. Um, I heard, um, let me look it up here. Uh, I heard, like, violent crimes are up, like, 39% mm -hmm. yep. on the Strip alone. Yeah, just on the Strip. Yeah. And, um, and, and I've been seeing these mixed messages about it. I got friends yeah, that are yeah. just posting and be like, raise the room rates bring entertainment back like i'm cool with bringing entertainment back oh yeah I, I mean i don't necessarily know if raising the roommates room rates would do it maybe it would maybe it wouldn't 
it's like you're are, are, you, are they just trying to keep the riff raff away or something? Is that the the whole point of it? That's what I've been hearing, right? So they they dropped the rates really low, and then everyone well, it's came a supply out. Supply and demand thing, obviously. Well, yeah, so, they yeah. got to get people out here, so they're like offering incentives for like uh, cheap airfare out here, and um, and the hotel rooms are really low, what they were, mm-hmm. um, and they're actually I think they're higher than they were last year at this point. Like they've oh, really? already put it up, they put it right back on track to where the wow. numbers are supposed to be. Which is just absurd. That's some dumbass well, accountant. It, yeah, that's kind of weird. It's like you got, you don't have as many casinos open, so yeah. like the competition, the supply isn't as large as what it was last year. Um, but their prices are the same, which is weird. I, you know, yeah. thinking about it, like there's not a, a huge demand of people coming out here, so this, you know, the supply is higher than the demand, so the prices should be lower. That makes sense to me. And you know, flights coming out here or going anywhere it's like i i got a, a flight for one of my coworkers. he's going to be driving to colorado to do a, a gig out there and then flying back the following day and man the flight was like 39 dollars. like holy crap that is cheap yeah it's super cheap and it was always it was always like an affordable price um to fly back to vegas which i always liked mm-hmm. but um now it's just like dirt cheap to get back yeah. into vegas and uh, but yeah they had to raise the rates back up because they dropped the prices of everything super low and then i guess it was uh just a lot of shitty people coming out here and then there's nothing for them to do besides lose all their money at a slot machine right and and they open the they open the hotels and everything but it's like bars are open now again so yeah you can get fucked up and then lose all your money gambling but it's like there's no there's no additional services all the entertainment the distractions yeah bring entertainment back is a big thing man yeah and that's got to happen. It's a huge part of the equation. Yeah. It's a huge part of the and equation. And that's a huge part of the economy out here, too. It's like... Oh, yeah. I mean... You know how many you entertainers and, are out of work? You, you Entertainers, you got the, you know, all the, the field techs, all of the, you know, people behind the scenes, like, just the technicians, the operators, like... Yeah. Man, all the people that work um, at, at, temporarily for each show mm-hmm. and each convention. Right. There's a huge force of people that are just there as food service people. Right. For these conventions that aren't happening. And like that was that was their existence, man. Yeah. I mean, CES being canceled. Yeah. Like, what? They're, oh, they're doing a virtual CES. Like who's going to pay to do a virtual CES? Like, no. Come on. Who cares? No one wants to do that. Yeah. I can look it's up. Like I can the, look up your company's website yeah. online. Yeah. I don't have that's to pay what it you is. To, yeah. I, I mean that's crazy. That's, yeah, that's the largest convention in the. Is it in the entire country? CES easily, or maybe right? the world? Or, I don't. I know it's largest in the state, obviously. I mean, we got CES, and then the next largest I think is SEMA, right? Um, but man, they're canceling CES. I, I saw that. I'm like virtual CES. I was like, wow, that that doesn't make any sense. And then NAMS canceled as well. It's like that's got to be oh, really Anaheim as well. I mean, Disneyland's still closed. Disneyland. I heard in California. they opened up for a second, right? They, they did for a second, then they closed again in Anaheim. They're still closed, but the Disneyland in Florida is still open, which doesn't make any sense to me. And apparent, I mean, I heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true that like Comic Con, Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con is the biggest one. In the oh, world. really? That's okay. what Google I guess says. that makes sense. Yep, that would make sense. That's but CES that's and throw. SEMA have to be right behind it. I do both of those every year, mm-hmm. and uh, and man, it's a uh, that's a massive, yeah. massive event. Yeah. And yeah. I've done CES a couple of years. Um been to NAB. I love NAB. NAB is awesome. Yeah. Technology I wise. NAB. Uh, it's, it's like kind of you know, that's that's our realms. Like you got all the you know, they got the audio and video going on. I got to do the Avid booth last year. Oh so nice. Pro Tools and nice. stuff. We did yeah. a big uh, surround sound setup. We did two big surround sound setups yeah. for their new systems. It was awesome. Nice. Super what I'm into, so it was, it's fun to do that shit for work. They're doing the Atmos stuff now, too, which is awesome. That's what it was, yeah. is Atmos. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to think of it. Yeah. 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 Dolby Atmos, man. That stuff's crazy. Oh, it sounds good, and it's, it's, uh, I don't know, just the, the, the stuff you can do with it's phenomenal, yeah. man. Yeah. I love those interfaces. Yeah. Technology is going, advancing so quick. It's crazy. Yeah. Exponential growth, too. Oh, yeah. It's going to start taking off to the point where we can't, uh, we can't really comprehend it. Like, uh, you can spend all day on your laptop mm-hmm. trying to keep up with how f- where technology is going to be at, right. and in like five to ten years, it's going to be moving so rapidly that you're just not even you'll 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 stop, and then it's going to be moving. Right. And you're like, fuck, I haven't looked for two or three days. I'm completely out of the loop, and right. I have no idea right. how anything works anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I do 
you know, I'm into computer gaming, so oh nice, and it's you know the, all of the the graphics card that I that I have is like at the time when I bought it was, you know, it's a lot. It's really expensive. Oh, the best graphics card around. Then like a month later, it's like obsolete. It's, it's going to get to the point where it's like you buy this today, tomorrow it's yeah, that it, it doesn't mean anything. It's worthless. Not it's like, not obviously not worthless, but even computers is like six months. Right, you can buy the best computer on the market six oh, yeah. months. It's a piece of shit. Yep. Yeah, I mean that's one thing too is with uh, with graphics card companies like they got a huge boost with uh, Bitcoin and all that with the um, the processing that they use on there. Oh yeah, like the, the, to do mining, the mining of it. Yeah, it's all done through the graphics card, not done through your CPU. So you know, Nvidia and um, AMD had huge boosts to their market shares because of that. And I get, it makes sense, but I mean that that makes it so their graphics cards are their prices haven't gone down like they used to. When it's just based on gaming or, you know, for the most part, it's gaming, obviously, but there's yeah. obviously other industries. You got, you know, graphics, like, you got a bunch of stuff, movie. Like video editing, you got to have yeah, a nice exactly. graphics card. I had to yep. invest in one for this. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's crazy how that came about. And, like, you got these little micro units that you can buy to mine all of those cryptocurrencies. Oh, really? Yeah, like, just a little tiny. They're energy efficient? Yeah, just a little tiny computer Got you know just a little box, and it's basically just a small graphics card with um, a built-in like uh, it's not even a a, gra- a a GUI. It's just nothing in there. It's just you just plug it in, and then mine's like, Bitcoin, huh? You type in something, some type of code. I haven't done it, but I was like, I'm starting to look into it, and then it's like, yeah, this isn't something I really want to get into. But it, it's crazy how small it's gotten. I was gonna get into it, but it was at the point where, like, in the beginning, mm-hmm. it was totally worth it to build oh, yeah. some computers. Uh, but then it got to the point where um, unless you're building a massive array of mm-hmm. just mo- open motherboards without housing and you just right. blast fans on them, and right. uh, it's like it costs more money for the electricity to run yeah. the system yep. than you're making mining Bitcoin. Right. So, yeah, it's like a little box like that would be cool if they actually made it energy efficient enough to where you're not losing money on the power. Right. Because that was that was ultimately the reason I didn't get into it. It was like I'd actually be losing money. Right. And it's like people are like, oh, I moved to specific regions in the world because right. the cost per kilowatt hour is the lowest. So then I can mine Bitcoin, you know, and like like I was looking for uh, new places to live uh, to survive the pandemic. And uh, like Missouri is one of the lowest uh, cost of living places in the country. And so right. it's like now you're going to move to fucking Missouri just to <laughs> mine Bitcoin because the cost right. is so low. Well, I mean, out here, if you get, you can get your own little solar generator or something, that'd probably cover it all. That's true. You probably could get it going right. with solar. Solar's probably powerful enough to operate a computer all day and all if night. If you have if you just have one, just to it, yeah, just dedicated for that. That would make sense, I think, right? Yeah. Don't don't put in the same grid as your house. You know, if, if, even if if your house is off the grid already, then you know, off the grid, on the grid, whatever, bullcrap. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that would that would be worth it, I think. But then it's you know cost of solar is just so expensive right now too it's that it's gonna be what in like five years it'll be like how much it would cost for you to buy like a little you know gasoline generator or something oh yeah you know i mean you can see all the with tesla coming out they're trying to get the their electric cars down like 40 grand like for most people that afford it like yeah they've been saying that for a long time i've been i want one close it's It's getting getting closer and closer yeah Yeah, he was always saying i'm gonna get it to the point where i'll have an economy model and it'll be a thousand dollars down and like that would be awesome i know i might get it at that point between three to five a month right yeah yeah i would i was like dude if you do that i'm buying one for sure but i mean it's it's the lithium ion right Uh, the lithium ion and they're starting to run out of it and then uh and so it's getting harder and harder for them to mine for it around the world and so they're starting to switch to like cobalt yeah and that's where china is coming in with the all they're going to different countries and exploiting the lithium and everything yeah but that's gonna only last for so long i know and Uh and all of a sudden all these like they uh, moved that factory up north by reno for Tesla, yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a lithium mine up there. That's probably part of it, but I know they're building their their battery systems there for yeah. Tesla and for. Isn't like, there one out here in Vegas too? I thought there was um, a. There's some kind of warehouse out here in Vegas. I know. I, I think there's. I've ended up playing cards with some of the guys that work at the Tesla. F- something. I think it's a. I think there's know. a warehouse out here where they build. I I don't know. I mean, one of the guys I used to work with at Guitar Center. I mean, that's. That's where you and I met when I was working at Guitar Center. So you know, the good old days. Yeah, good old days of Guitar Center. Back when I was still doing music for a living <laughs> instead of conventions and, and video. Yeah, one of the guys I used to work with there, he's working with Tesla now. Um, I don't know if he's working with Tesla. Uh, yeah, I think he's working with Tesla. Tesla Solar, though, so like for the home home solar systems. And 
I think he's staying out here. I don't think he moved up to Reno. So I know there's something out here. Did you did you find anything Tesla, on that? One? Tesla Giga Factory. Is that the one in Reno or is that the one out here in Vegas? Uh, I typed in Las Vegas. It might be the one in Reno. Sparks. It's in Sparks. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's just... Yeah, it's not too far away, right? It's not too far away at all. Uh, let's see. I thought they had a... Uh, I thought they had one in... Uh, Tesla comes to Nevada, Las Vegas Sun. Yeah, because I know I've talked to some people out here that are working at the Tesla factory, so it's got to be close by. Oh, it's just clickbait. Yeah. Fucking internets. <laughs> the internet's been ruined. It's like you try to go find information and they're just like, ads, 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 ads. And right. it's like, oh, man, why do you even, you don't even try that. Uh, Las Vegas wants Tesla headquarters relocated. Oh, yeah. I guess there is, there is well, one that, out that's here. That's a whole talk headquarters. about. Well, I, I thought that was the Texas thing. What's going on with California, the headquarters in California? Outside of San Francisco, that oh, whole threat debacle. to leave California, yeah. Yeah. and then they ended oh. up going to they're going to like to Austin or something or Houston. Oh yeah, that's what it says I in think here they too. Ended Texas, up going to Texas. Nevada, and it ended up going to Texas. That's smart on their part, though. Yeah. Texas is a lot more affordable. And Man, if you want to make a, do a business in the states, it, it really seems like Texas is the way to go. That's one of the places I was looking at is yeah. moving to Texas. My buddy was telling me he had a good, uh, <laughs> I was going to go maybe possibly like uh, do cabinet installs uh, out in uh, out in some small town in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. But things are starting to maybe look up out here in Las Vegas, actually. I've been uh, talking to people. It seems like um, possibly around February, March, there are shows that have been booked mm -hmm. and they aren't getting canceled. Hopefully. Hopefully. Right. Hopefully. They yeah, that was that was booked. one thing that I was hoping for too. Is when the Raider Stadium was supposed to open, they had like a week before the show was supposed to happen. They had a, I think they had like a Garth Brooks show oh, planned, yeah. and then you know they canceled it like five days before it happened. It's like, oh no, we can't do it. And like, oh, that yeah. would have been good. Like, I, I, I mean, uh, the super spreader events, or whatever. But uh, I mean, yeah. it, being able to have those people get jobs to do that would have been awesome you know yeah big time man i i definitely want to i would love to be able to uh to do some shows over at the uh the big stadium yeah. sixty five thousand seats yeah that's huge i saw uh, i'm on a, a facebook group that's basically it's a av installer group and one of the guys uh, that works for the company that did the main uh installation for the audio system at the stadium um posted a picture of it and it's like uh he didn't say who the company was and say how much it was or whatever because you know you're not allowed but yeah. it was all a, a huge Harmon install so you know you have bss you got jbl you got crown basically oh, nice. and that you know that's great. we do a lot of bss installs so i was seeing that and like there's i think it was i think it was like 128 processors oh wow and, and then uh it ma and it maxed out 80% of the processor is I.O. So you got, <laughs> you, you know, you got 256, no, sorry, 512 channels per, per. processor. They maxed out 80% of those. <laughs> and, you know, and then you had all of the the separate output, uh, output chassis, you know, blue 120s or whatever they're running. And, man, that's just massive. It's like I would have loved to see the design file for that. That's crazy. I want to just, that stuff just interests me. It's like I see it. God, it's you like, how do, how do people, that? Yeah, I mean, like, how would I want to just see it so I can see like how did this person program this thing? Yeah, that would one, be interesting to me. You know, one output at a time. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's that's an art. You know, obviously, it's it's technical, but you know, it's there's an art form to it to make it yeah. look good and functional. And you know, doing where I'm at now, being seeing the the jobs that I've done, there's some really horrible programming jobs. Oh yeah, out there and. You know, I'm not People gonna, get in over their head. I'm not going to besmirch the companies that did them. Um, that's not right to do, but man, some of them are really bad. Like, yeah, horrible. Course. Like, why would you do that? Like, they, it's just they don't have a basic understanding of audio signal flow or any type of signal flow. They just hire TV repair guys and right. shit. They're like, well, I'm an electrician, so and, right. you know, I can I can install electrical equipment, and it's like. No. AV equipment is not just no. your basic electrical equipment. Right. It's a whole nother universe, and right. it's you know everything's its own universe. Right, and uh, yeah, you just can't just jump into that mess. Yeah, uh, I every every 
place I've ever gone to where I'm like, oh, you're in charge of this system now. It's just like, okay, well, I need a couple days because I'm just going to tear it apart. I'm right. not even going to look at what the old guy did. Yeah. Whatever he yeah. did, we, I'm, glad he, I'm glad he was able to make sh- stuff happen for you, but I'm not going to do it that way. I want to start from scratch, and I'm going to set everything to nominal. Right. <laughs> Let's start yeah, there. Get gain structure correct. Get your routing uh, correct. Like, Man, uh, it's, it's crazy how much extra stuff is in some of these program files. Dude. It's like you got to, they have like a, they got a gain, then they have a delay, then they have an EQ, then they have a crossover, then they have another gain, then they have a normalizer, then they have another gain, Ugh. then they have a compressor, then they have a normalizer, then it goes out of the output. Like, You've ruined that what signal What the heck completely. are you doing to it, man? Yeah. Less is more, man. Less is more. Uh, yeah. That's Less is more in audio. One of my favorite stories, I was working over at... Uh, <coughs> When I was working at Vamped, I was always showing people in my right. showing people how to do audio and teaching people. And I always had someone under my wing, and uh, and I'd let them mix the opening bands or whatever, and come up and uh, and they and I'd be like I'd be asked, why aren't you moving all those knobs? You see them sitting there just turn and turn and turn and turn and turn and doing all this stuff and fucking checking things right. and moving stuff and like every single knob's got to be touched and turned, you right. know? And I was just like, because. You know, I know what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, lo- I love that. Uh, I, I said it already. Yeah, yeah. It's already set. Yeah. It, it's not. Uh, it's not always a set it and forget it. But you yeah. know, if you need to make changes, you make changes. But yeah, but, most of the time, like that's one of the arts. Uh, like whenever I got out of college, fresh, and I was just had, had no clue what I was doing. Right. Like mm-hmm. I thought I did. I I just gone to college for this. Thing. Right. <laughs> Fucking idiot. And uh, and so I'd always be touching every button and, and like I'd be experimenting and messing with things and I'm always moving. And it took me a long time to just like back away right. and listen to the show and then go, oh, oh, this one little thing right here. Okay. Right. And then stop touching things. Right. You know? Yeah. That was one thing that got me when I was working at Guitar Center, man. I was, I was working on the floor as a salesman. And that's, again, that's where we met. But I, I have. You know, I have this pet peeve in OCD. It's like you get you go to the the live live section, and every console has all the faders everywhere. I'm like, when I closed every night, I went to every single one and zeroed everything out. I was like, yeah, it, you have some massive patience <laughs> for that, man. It just gives me that's that's one of my pet peeves is unzeroed equipment and then yeah. you know poorly wrapped cables. So yeah, I was like, uh, don't do that. Don't wrap it like that. Over under, please. Over under. Over under. You know, some uh, a lot of my my best friends are guitar players, but man, those guys don't. A lot of them don't know how to wrap cables properly. They're just gonna start putting it around yeah, there. The, Whenever you start oh. doing this, oh, it gives me a heart attack, man. Yeah. Like, oh no, don't do that. No, yeah. <laughs> I, I I have that pet peeve with my wife too, and how she wraps her cables. Sometimes I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't want to say it to you, but don't wrap your cables like that. Oh uh, yeah, we've been. Uh, Angela's been learning how to wrap cables properly and do everything properly. We've been taking on this project together. Right. She's she's definitely my better half in this, and uh, make sure that we look good and and everything's done right. Right, it's, it's fantastic. Um, and yeah, she's been excellent at learning all the new techniques and teaching her over under and how right. everything right. works. So I'm like, no, don't fucking, nope. don't do that. Or like or the guy who wants to, uh, the guy who wants to tight knot, and uh-huh. it's like your cable's like this tight. Yeah, you wrap. You what the hell are you doing? it up and then you wrap it around itself. I'm like, yeah, no. come on, man. You're just destroying that cable. Yeah. It might not happen now, but when you're going to need that cable to work, it's not going to work. <laughs> you know, I was taught, I went to, I, when I went to school for this, uh, they taught me to over, 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 over. It was just one way. Just keep rolling it with your fingers. Nope. And I was like, that works great because you're in a, is a studio environment. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, these are 15 foot cables or 20 foot cables. Right. It's like the second you get real cable in your hand and you got a 50 or 100 footer, you're fucked. Right. And that thing's just going to twist twist all over itself and turn into a corkscrew and a yep. pig's tail. Yep. And it's like, yeah, it's just not going to happen, man. Where, where did you end up going to school? I went to the Conservatory for Recording Arts and Sciences. It's in uh, Arizona, right? Yeah, in Arizona. Yeah. I loved it, man. Yeah, I had a friend that went there. A couple friends that went there. Uh, I went to um, Citrus College over in uh, uh, kind of Glendora, California area. And it was oh. it's a community college. Yeah, Conservatory was awesome. I knew a lot of people that went there That's that got, they, they know... They know their stuff when they go there or when they leave there for the most part. Yeah. Obviously, obviously, you learn more on the job than you do from it, but you get a good base knowledge from that place, you know, so, and other so. places. 
Where's the live sound thing at? Oh, this is switching. That's oh, why. there it is. Broadcast audio. Broadcast audio. Oh, they have a broadcast yeah. thing now? Let me check that yeah. out. I went in 2006 is when I uh, went there. So, oh, the studio. Studio. This is pretty good. I can't play that. Yeah, I was, uh, I think I was 2000. I think I was around the same time. Citrus oh, yeah, College, 2005, that. 2006. Look at that little broadcast room they got set up. Nice. It was a great learning environment. The teachers were really intelligent people. And uh, and they um, they offer a, um, a a realistic view of what you're up to when you leave, right? Like right. it's. Uh, I remember the um, the final day that we were there. That, See, video game sound. That's that's what I went to school for. Video game sound. Video game sound. We were we got like a basic lesson on it. Right. It was just coming into the school. Yeah, I mean that was you know it was two thousand what two thousand. Six, I think it was. That's where I was going for. Is you know, I've always been into oh. baseball and I've been into audio, like music. So that's kind of where my path went. This looks like the Neotech room on the Gilbert campus. Whenever I went there, they had a Neotech in uh -huh. this room. I believe it was one of the first big consoles I ever got to touch. It was pretty cool. Yeah, they were teaching us how to do um, shit. What's the uh, What's that program that everybody does the sound replacement with for video games? Uh, I know what you're talking about. Um, uh, we're teaching us how to do that. That's the I live sound looking. Now I'm interested in it. Oh, I look at the live sound thing. <laughs> I really like the live sound because they didn't have, um, you know, it was a recording school. Mm -hmm. And uh, does that still, do they still have the Yamaha? Jeez. So, so it, Keith. <laughs> yeah. That so was my live sound instructor right there. Nice. Yeah, uh, they, um, if you, pull up a uh, Citrus College uh, recording arts program. That's where I went. And it's a community college, so it was, you know, it wasn't a private school, so it was like ended up being like $55 a unit or something. Oh, nice. So I you know, I did 2 years of that, got my it's not a degree, it's a certificate in audio engineering and you know, ended up being like like $4,000 or something as opposed to my friend went to the uh, LA Recording Academy. Um I forget I don't think that's what it's called, but um he ended up paying like twenty grand, and he he left there not knowing as much as I did. <laughs> yeah, recording technology. Let's see yep. if they got any images though. They should. Uh, I have, it's been a while since I went there to the website at least. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean I learned a lot there, but that was more. They kind of did a an all around audio discovery type of thing where you learned, um, you know, the frequency ranges, what instruments are in what range. It was more recording centric than live sound so it's kind of it's kind of funny where my journey went from audio i started in high school i was a roadie for my friend's band and then it was a uh, a 13 piece funk band oh really called ghetto brass and uh they ended up you know reducing size to like nine people um i mean the highlight of doing sound for those guys was they they ended up being able to open up for tower of power at uh the um the Greek theater in uh, uh where's that at down in California I forgot what city it's in um but that was great man that was fun yeah so, so I went I went from there so high school doing band stuff just carrying you know drum kits around you know, speaker cabinets guitar cabinets bass cabinets setting up drum kits so it's like I was in that world and then you know at the same time in college I was playing baseball so it's like split between baseball and and audio and I ended up going the audio route which you know looking back at it now is like I, am I regretting it like no I like my life but you know if I if I got good enough and I was playing pro sports obviously that would be a lot more lucrative but it's like, would I have yeah, been able to make it it's easier to win the lottery bro I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty good I mean I wasn't great but here's some pictures yeah let's see what they have I mean that's where uh, uh, VR and Eve right VR 64 I think that was the main co main room console in there, and then they had a Digico in the in Studio B. Oh, you guys had a Digico, huh? Yeah, they had a Digico nice. in there. Um, yeah, they didn't do a lot of... So it, it was weird, because, you know, I started off there doing live sound stuff for my friend's band, and then I went to Citrus College to do the recording uh, stuff, and that was more studio-centric. And after that, I went and got a job at um, uh, Martin Sound Studios, and those are the, Martin Sound is actually the company that makes flying faders. 
Oh, cool. So the actual namesake, you know, not just saying, oh, this console has flying faders. Like, no, they actually did flying faders. Oh, not the motorized faders, the flying faders with the, 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 the bands? No, they're the motor, the motorized ones. The motorized but, ones, okay. But basically everyone calls it the flying faders, but that's yeah. actually a trademark from Martin Sound is flying oh, okay. faders. Okay. And those guys were actual, you know, they're actual engineers. Like, they're building this stuff and they're testing this stuff. They're they're doing this stuff. They're all If you look up, yeah, Martin Sound Studios and... I was there for a couple of years interning and, you know, assistant, uh, basically second assistant recording engineer. That was a good, good event from my life too. You know, I didn't get paid a lot at all for like the first year, year and a half. Yes, yeah, that works, right? <laughs> but, uh, good learning experience. That's the main thing on, on the, you know, in-person learning experience, some fun things got to do with some of the final episodes of, um, Yeah. Big studio. We get the we were we were kind of the backup studio for Fox um, Television Studios. So we ended up doing a couple episodes of um, uh, what was that show? I'm going blank right now. Mm. Uh, King of the Hill. There he was. Oh, fun. So yeah, we got I got to be in there and doing some of the they're doing the music for it, obviously for King of the Hill. And had a whole, you know, full orchestra and everything. So I got to do a lot of orchestra miking, which is really cool. Um, they had choirs come in. I mean, it's it's really, really cool thing being able to do that. And, um, you know, they build that that studio. They have the studio there, but their main thing is the equipment that they make. You know, it's flying faders, and then uh, they have those solid state preamps, MSS ten. It's like. 2500 three grand for a single channel mic preamp something like that <clears throat> and they're they're really great but uh yeah that was a good le- learning experience so i went from live sound to recording to doing a little bit of live sound here and there for other companies while i was doing the recording stuff in california and then i moved out here to vegas got a job at guitar center <laughs> so like oh, i can kind of use my experience i'm not really a musician like i I can play guitar, but I'm not a guitarist. I haven't picked up my guitar in, man, I don't know, over a decade. Oh, no. I'm not a musician. So that's one thing. I'm not a musician. But I was like, that was one thing when I started working there. I'm like, everyone's like, they did like a a large, you know, hiring thing when I was there. So we had like a group of 20 people. They're like, why do you why do you want to work here? They're like, well, I'm a musician. Well, I'm a musician. I'm a musician. I'm like, I was like, uh, I'm not a musician. <laughs> uh, I've been working with musicians and I know what they need. Right. So I was like, you know, that's how my, that was my pitch. And it, a lot it more worked. qualified. So it worked. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I ended up going from there, working from the sales floor in the recording section, live sound recording. And, um, you know, I learned that's, I don't, I don't like to bad mouth guitar center. I mean, it's, it was a good job for what I was doing. Obviously it's a sales yeah. job, like, yeah, yeah whatever. It, you know, it was, a met, the main thing was making contacts. I met you. I met a lot of other people. I got from that job got me to where I am now so thank you Guitar Center for getting me my job I have right now it's like when you leave Guitar Center usually you leave in a better position which is awesome so nice yeah, yeah that's how uh, that's where like pretty much everybody I went to school with ended up was Guitar Center right like I was I uh, I, I think I'm one of the only people I think one other guy actually ended up uh doing sound for his church or something like that mm-hmm. but like we all went to school to be audio engineers right and that was the problem right everyone was like well i'm a dj or i'm a, I'm a hip-hop <laughs> artist yeah. right yeah. everyone was a rapper right and it's like well what the fuck are you doing here right right and they're like well i want to learn how to produce beats and stuff and it's like well this is the wrong place man right you know this is for engineers this is to learn how consoles function and learn right s- you know and uh and so when when we all left, like I tried to stay in touch with the people I went to school with and it was like everyone just took their degree and lit it on fire. And <laughs> <laughs> the best they right. could hope for was like to at, at least make it to Guitar Center. Right. And a lot of them didn't even make it there. You know? and, I mean, it's, it's a sales job, but yeah. I mean, you got to know your stuff for the most part. You know, it's sometimes you get people there that don't. And but uh, I mean, it's like any other sales retail store. So yeah. Can you sell this item? It's like, yeah. 
I'm like, can you sell this item plus insurance? <laughs> I guess <laughs> that was That's one of the, like the core, corporate things. Like, oh, do you sell want, the warranty. Do you want the warranty? Like, yeah. don't call it a warranty. It's pro coverage. Pro coverage. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm not, I don't want to besmirch, you know, Guitar Center. I still oh, have no. friends that work there. You know, uh, I, you know, um, you remember Alone, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course. So he was the store manager there at the store I used to work at, and he's now a district manager, so he's moved up. Oh, good for so him! So he's no longer seen him in a store manager there. Yeah, he's going he's covering all of you know. He's got Nevada and kind of parts of Southern California, so that's his district now. So damn, good yeah. for Alon. Yeah, good for him, man. He's making a good amount of money there. I I don't know how they're doing so. right now. Yeah, I mean it's. I went I went there the other day to pick up some gear for you know last minute stuff I needed for a job and. It was just weird walking in there, man. It's the shelves are like empty. Yeah, I mean, why are you gonna invest like, in in product? Well, not even that. Hard? Not even that. It's like it's like most of the stuff's made in China, and it's all being shut down. Oh yeah. Like if you look I at had the to special order some speakers because I wanted to yeah. expand on. I had a Behringer speaker package, and I wanted just a few more of those right. to expand on it, and it cost me double because right. of the tariffs to China. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Well, I yeah, you, if you walk, walk in, if you go into the store, look at the, you know, you got you right in, you turn right, you see the studio monitors. There's like two Ugh. Uh, audio yeah. interfaces. There's like one option. Yeah. And even the small, like the Scarlet 2i2s and everything, they were like, you know, 150 bucks. Yeah. None in stock. Damn. Damn. Yeah, they got to start investing in uh, American companies. That's kind of the. I point mean, there are right? American companies, right? Are for they? the most part. Well, they, but, but they, I mean, they're, they're made in they're made in yeah, China, right? And like those companies, those companies need to start investing in in functioning uh, factories out here in America, right. right? So that like people have jobs, right? In America, yeah. And uh, and that's hard, but once you once you throw those tariffs up, it's like, well, it's going to cost you uh, as much, if not more, to right. go to China and back. So you might as well set up shop in America right. and bring those jobs back here. Yeah, I mean, for the company I work for right now, they're getting a uh, like this uh, wireless uh, system for kind of for workout for you know fitness studios. Oh, cool! Where they can do they can go outdoors and basically do their indoor events, but just outdoors like cycling or yoga or whatever, and they can make it so it's not disturbing everyone. It's basically a massive in your monitoring system, you know. But, oh, cool! But it's they're getting the, we're getting this like from direct from China and and it's really cheap. I'm like, how is it that cheap? Like, <laughs> I'm just thinking about like if you just think about a Shure or a Sennheiser IEM system, they start at like what like six seven hundred bucks. Yeah, for one channel, and this is like ten channels for like a hundred and twenty dollars. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> but then it's like the tariffs on there, and it's twenty five to forty percent. Yeah, so it's like that hundred. You know, hundred dollar item is now upwards of two hundred dollars almost sometimes. So, still worth it. It's still worth it if in it the works. end. Uh, yeah, but it, you know, it just depends on what the budget is, obviously. So that's the main thing: is does yeah. it fit the budget? Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and that's that's one of the things. It's just you know, do you want something that is cheap and will fit the budget, or do you want something that is good quality and will last? Yeah. So. So I like I'm 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 working with a band right now and they have some cheap in ear monitors and uh, and they're driving me nuts like not the band the in ear monitors are driving me nuts because they're just they're one of those ones that's just like you get these four frequencies you right. know and it's like you know just click, VHF click, click. stuff yeah yeah and uh, and the antennas aren't very efficient they're really small they're not even BNC connectors right no, they're, they're like built-in ones yeah like little smaller well no they 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 can come in and out but it's like oh it's like a it's like half the size of a BNC. Oh, right, right. Right. And uh, and so then you can't even like get expansion kit parts for it properly, right. and then yeah. just uh, not really. It's a different world. Yeah, it's not really efficient. Yeah. And uh, and then they don't work very well, of course. You know, and then I'm like, man, you're used to uh, you're used to being able to open up your uh, laptop and connect to these things via mm -hmm. you know a networking cable and uh, and like program right and do stuff. Yeah. And it's like no, no, no. Yeah. I don't do that. Yeah. I'm basic. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, no, I love I mean that, that shit. No, I'm, the, I, I'm the saying, RF stuff. I do that. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying that the cheap stuff. They. Yeah, the cheap. The stuff cheap stuff do doesn't do that. They're basic. Yeah, they I'm don't. Not saying I was. You don't do that. I was no, like, I, what? I thought no, you no, do, I that. do that. Yeah, sure. W WBS or you know wireless. What is it? Wireless workbench. Wireless work, WWB. Yeah. 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 Wireless workbench and the Sennheiser one. I do both of them. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's weird going from that world 
of, you know, large distribution wireless systems. And then you're buying this little $120, $150. Yeah. Like basically it's a karaoke mic system. Yeah. And I'm walking in with like, I literally have, you know, IAS on here and I'm bringing right. an R R RF Explorer and it's like, yeah, this is like a thousand dollars in like RF just to right. make your microphone find the perfect frequencies. And right. they're like, oh, well we have these. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, that that doesn't work in the large scale, obviously. No, it does it. it yeah. That's one you one thing. Two hundred fifty rooms. It yeah. ain't happening. That's one thing that's funny is that you know a lot of people they want to they want to get this item to do this certain thing, and they want it for you know hundred bucks, like or or they you know hey I want ten channels of wireless for my budget's two two grand like. I can get you two channels of wireless for two grand. Yeah. It's like, well, I, I saw this system that it's an eight channel wireless system. It's four hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm like, uh Yeah. I, it, Are we doing a karaoke club right. where you're gonna be ten feet away from it? Right. I'm like, yeah, this is you know, I am not it'll it, work. It, it a lot of people just don't know. I mean it's not yeah. their fault, they're just ignorant of it of it. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, of course. It's but it's just, you know, that's why they have to them. call people like you and me. Right. Because we live in this world. And right. We're just we like, know what it actually requires. Like, you know, I can you, hook that up for you, but. Yeah, I'll help you hook it up. It's not going to work that great. It it might work. You might be able to get some of them to work. <laughs> They're not going to all work at the same time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and then it's like you get the the people that buy the um, uh, the the double packs that have like the body pack and the microphone. You're like, oh, I got two wireless systems in one. No, like, you do not. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah I see a post, you know, on a, on a forum and everything. It was like, I bought this system. Uh, it's, it has a wireless body pack and a microphone, but I can't use them at the same time. What's going, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. I'm like, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just, it's you know, it's. No, they are doing something wrong. You're turning both transmitters on right. at the same time. Well, yeah. Yeah. There's that. So you, you got two that. transmitters, one receiver. Yeah. Like, I, I, the easiest way for me to explain that to people is, it, and I tell them, I was like, think uh, when you're driving your car and you have a radio station on and you're. You know, you're driving far away from that radio station and you're coming into range of another radio station that's on the same frequency. What happens? Yeah. It's like... Switch over. It switches over back and forth between them, whichever has the strongest signal. That's what's going to prevail. And that's what happens when you do two transmitters on one frequency. It's yeah. Like, and if you got a good system, that system's just going to send nothing because it right. goes, oh, I'm getting interference on right. this because you're sending interference directly to it from both units. So they yep. consider both units interference and they go, we're going to not send a bunch of garbled shit down the line because right. it's a good unit. Yeah. And it's actually a benefit. Yes. You don't want that. <laughs> so like everything keeps shutting down. This thing's crap. Yeah. No. This twenty thousand dollar device is not crap. It's meant is doing its job. Yeah, I have to tell it's people that if you use the Axion stuff. Oh my god, I love the Axion stuff. Those are sexy. So fucking sexy. Yeah, yeah and they just, man, they're so expensive though. I know. They're like five grand for a microphone. Yeah, yeah. I got to. So my, I'm a, you know, I'm an engineer, but I also do the ordering for the company. Yeah. So I, you know, I order everything. So it's like. It kind of works out where I was because, you know, Guitar Center, I was, I, I kind of knew the products and now I'm going to this and I'm like, oh, I'm ordering this and, but I'm also an engineer. So like if I, if I get a job that happens and the guy that's specking it, the project manager, most of them are pretty good at what they're doing. But if I get one that's kind of off, I'm like, oh, why are you ordering this when you want to do this? Like, that doesn't make sense. So I tell him like, this doesn't work with this. You know, you want this instead, and I ask him about it. I'm like, oh well, we're trying to do this. I just put it on the on the order. I'm like, well, okay, well, do you want me to do it right, or do you want to? You know, got to do a change order. What do we got to do to get this to work? And you know, it ends up fixing it, which is great. So that's an advantage of where I'm at. And uh, but yeah, I mean, it's crazy, but people think the stuff that can things can do what they can't. Yeah, you know, especially for the price that they're getting. It's like. Anyway, here's the the client the clients uh, what was that in the whole the whole meme you got the client's vision is like up here yeah. the client's budget is like down here oh yeah it's like oh well it's like I can make that happen right if you want this we can do that and I know how to hook it all up right and they're just like yeah but I only got like five hundred bucks <laughs> what no. why are you calling me <laughs> it's like uh, yeah you're gonna at least need like fifty grand yeah. to do what you want exactly. <laughs> 
It's so, so funny what people expect, and I have to do that uh, that same that same game with the uh, the dual transmitters. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I have like you know I have like twenty rooms, and I got operators in every room, and I'm like, don't let them see <laughs> both transmitters. Right. Like they don't exist. Right. Right. You have like this many labs and like two handhelds, and like the fucking lav packs that go with those handhelds don't exist. Right. Hide them. Right. And the handhelds that go with these lav packs, they don't fucking exist. If the client sees those things, they're going to start asking to use them. Mm -hmm. And then you are going to have to tell them no. And then they're going to complain about you to me. And it's like, and you're doing nothing wrong, right. but being prepared to change things over. Right. When it's like, nah, man, just hide that shit from their eyes. Like, don't even let them know, you know, because they're yep. not going to, they're going it, to, it's just going to turn into a big email chain because right. you put a microphone that well, on, the, on the table yeah. and the client saw it. Oh, it's crazy. Man. I've had some big email changes. Oh, yeah. It gets out of control, right? I've, got, I've had some that have been over 200 email correspondence oh, with, like, 20 people on it. Yeah. And, like, like, and it's just stupid stuff, like, asking this ridiculous question that can just be done by, it, like, a text or something. Yeah. But the problem is, is they have all these other people CC'd on the email, and they think something's wrong. I'm like, no, nothing's wrong. Now they have just, to justify it. It's like, well, it's just, this was this. Yeah. That's all. That was the problem. It was fixed. We fixed it. But it has to go through all these hoops. Yeah, yeah. I do. I'll That's always. Crazy, man. I let my I let my my crew know. I'm like I'll have they'll be like, you get this whole floor of people, mm -hmm. right? And all these rooms are your responsibility. Just make sure they run without a hitch. And they'll give us all like maybe our like radios to communicate or like a group text to communicate on. Right. And I go, here's my private number. I was like, if anything goes wrong, you fucking hit up my private number. I was like, I don't need this going all around the building. Right. That something's going wrong. And like, as far as everyone's concerned, nothing ever happened on my floor. Right. Right. Like, that's how we work things out. Like, yeah. I don't need my boss's boss fucking hearing radio calls all day long or sending text messages or email chains out. It's like, just call me directly. Right. And I'll fix your problems right now. Right. And it, and then no one has to know that anything ever happened, you know, because yeah. it turns into this whole debacle, yeah. this nightmare that doesn't, we don't need to communicate that the guy dropped a microphone and didn't know how to fucking put it back on. And I went in the room and went, put right. it back on real quick, you right. know, or some dumb shit yeah. that's like totally irrelevant. Yeah. And, but, but yeah, these these corporate f events and these corporate clients will fucking blow up. Right. Uh, it just they you know there's like 20 people that have to justify their existence. Yeah, and they don't do they don't do anything. They actually literally they don't do anything, but they want to justify their ex existence with email chains all day long. And like I, I got to make sure that I keep my job this week. Right. <laughs> it's like nobody needs you. You literally <laughs> you're like the most useless person in the world, and all you do is complicate things. Right. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, it, it, it's frustrating, man. It's like it, we get some of these jobs that, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll do an example. Uh, a job where we did uh, chaos at the Palms, and they had the outdoor system. Uh, there's there's two sections. You got the nightclub, which is indoors, and then you got the pool deck, which is basically a big pool nightclub, which is just outside. This uh, one right here. That one right there, yep. Ooh, that's pretty. Um, the main, I love Las Vegas. The main front of house system for the outdoor pool was uh, a stack, ba basically a mini line array of three speakers uh, going around the perimeter of um, the main stage. I don't know if there's a picture of the main stage on there, but uh, where the DJ stage the was. The DJ stage? Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw some videos on this page. Um, and it, uh, mm -hmm. basically we had, them th it. We had a three high and... You know, we had we had everything with, you know, you got 15s in there in the cabinets. You got 8-inch, uh, 10-inch, or sorry, 15s, 10 inches, and, you know, 1.4s for the high frequencies. Everything is triamped. Um, nice. Nothing's passive in the system. It's all, you know, each, each individual driver has its own amplifier, which has its own processing output. And we had this whole system set up, all in tuned, all, you know, lined up, doing the right pitch, um, shooting out where it needs to shoot out. And then, you know, it, it, this one speaker from sitting in this one cabana was blocking the sight lines of 10 pixels on the video screen behind it. So we had to take down the entire bottom section of the speaker system because it was blocking 10 pixels. It's like... <laughs> 
What, what's more important? Oh. 10 pixels in one location or a sound system? Yeah, uh, and here's uh, some shots of the, uh, there's a stage right there, right? Or uh, that's inside. That's inside. Yeah. I'll find some outside stuff. Yeah, that's that shit's frustrating, yeah. man. It's like it's aesthetics takes over the sound. It's like it definitely does, though. It's like, a nightclub. Yeah, like it, no one's gonna come in if this sounds like crap. And and honestly, like uh, the client doesn't understand that the speakers need to go here to cover this specific range. There's a cone mm -hmm. that comes out of the speakers. It's this, it's this field of audio, right? And they need to they need to create like they need to cover. Right. And you start spreading them out or moving them to random places, you're not covering anymore. Right. And, uh, but they don't give a shit. And she's like, well, I mean, you could put them over there, right? And we'll still be able to hear them. Right. Well, yeah, you'll be able to hear it, but you're not covering the space that right. we, we, we set this up for months. We've been, you know, I use yep. several programs to, uh, to calculate exactly how many speakers we need to cover this amount of space and cover it properly. And it, they're just like, and they need to go fucking here. Right. Exactly here. This is the most optimal position. Like, yeah. Nope. No one gives a shit. <sighs> and, they, uh, they, there are people that do, but it's like sometimes the higher ups don't care. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm not. It's it, again. It's not. I'm not trying to no, mouth anyone. I don't want to. As know. the audio engineer, it's it's one of those funny things. Right. And I actually got to the point where I'm just like, oh, I, I don't care. You know, I don't give a shit where it goes. Um, you know, like where where do you want it to go? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> we want it you know, right like, here in the corner against the wall. Like, yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll All put right. it there. Sure. You know. I've had I've had clients they uh, come come to me when it sounds like crap because it's gonna sound like crap. Yeah, they literally want to stack the speakers behind the stage and walk directly in front of the speakers the whole time, <laughs> and it's like you know that's like the absolute worst thing you could ever do. Right. And they're just like, but that's how I envisioned it, and, that, and I'm like, Shh, I'm not I'm not complaining. I'm just letting you know as a professional right. that this is gonna sound terrible because I'm gonna have to hack these speakers to shit to make that microphone not squeal the entire time right. it's in front of them because this isn't how you do it, right? I right. put the speakers as far in front of you as I can to get them in there, and it's just like, but I don't need to explain all this. That's what you want? I'm your man. Right. Let's do this, you know, and I'm going to make it work because I don't fucking care, <laughs> you know? I stopped, like, the second I started doing corporate, uh, that first year was real hard for me because I'm a guy who cares, right? right. And I really want to do a great job and be fucking excellent at it. And uh, and that's not really allowed in that environment, right. right? They they have you have people that want things to look a certain way, or they need you know, they just the speaker is a prop to them, right? And and really, it's just in the way. Can we just do this without speakers somehow? You know? Yeah. L luckily, I'm still in the space where you know it's it's a major part of the system. So oh, so you so we're you know for the most part the installs we do it's you know the focus of this venue is the sound system. I mean that's, that's what's nice. being sold to the client is like you know this is sometimes multi-million dollar sound system, you know at least, you know, quarter of a million, half a million dollars and it's like the the client is paying this much for the sound system. They want it to sound great. It's like well we you know where are you, you going to compromise with it sounding great or are you going to compromise with it looking good? Right. It's like, it'll look good. Like, you know, it's gonna look these amazing. type of systems look awesome. Like, they, they look great. Do you want them to sound great too? Like, that's the main thing. <laughs> it's like, they're, they have the potential of sounding amazing and being, you can have the best sounding venue, you know, in the world. You can sell it like that. And like, because it, it can be that way. Yeah. You know, obviously the acoustics of the space will come into a factor, but of course, you know it. It can be at, at this point. It's, oh, we got the best sounding system in in all of Las Vegas, which is a big deal. Like, it's it's a nightclub venue, basically town, so type of place. So, it's like you have that. If you can, you know, bolster that as an advantage of of your space, that's a big idea, big thing, man. It's like this is the best sounding sound system. You're gonna get the hot, the top end DJs playing there. Yeah. Like, that's what they want. That's what they want, you know. So it, it's you got to spend the money to to get that money in, yeah. And uh, it is worth it, you know. In the long run, you know, it just depends on how things are run, you know. Can be you a got an engineer thing. on the on staff that's not going to blow all those speakers up? Yeah, yeah, man. That's that's a whole other option. That's <laughs> true. Man, we had uh, uh, they're like, well, I paid him fifty bucks for the night, <laughs> right? We had we had this one thing at um. You know, we did the audio system install for Chaos, and it, for six months, they had no issues. It was running great, 100%. Um, 
one uh, one venue or one night came in where a certain DJ wanted to come in and the, and the engineer for the DJ, not the DJ himself, the engineer wanted to have his own uh, auxiliary fader for the subs before we had it all tuned. So yeah. it's like the master will turn up everything. It's like you turn it up, it'll sound great. It's all perfectly tuned for that. It's flat. It's it's perfect. Yeah, it's flat. Yeah. Put it all in there. So, uh, you know, af- after that weekend, we got a call, you know, the, the following week, you know, Friday, Saturday nights came in. Monday came in, many, many came in. Oh, hey, uh, we have uh, some blown subs here. All of them. Uh, uh, okay, how many? Uh, we got six. I'm like, oh, okay, uh, six what? Uh, we have six of the uh, the large ones blown. Okay, is there any more? Uh, yeah, eight. eight. Eight of which ones? And <laughs> it's like, I mean, there's a, there's there's a lot of subs in there. It's like 20, yeah. 20 or thirty subs, and we ended up about half, a little over half, were blown. Yeah. <laughs> happened like, like that too yeah like uh they're like well what changed what did you guys do i'm like well, what do you mean we're we're not operations <laughs> yeah we we've installed you know this who who came in this past weekend like that's, that's what happened that's what happened yeah and like uh someone who shouldn't be touching so shit so touching and shit. so requested the following we you know gate we followed that request that we asked they asked us if we wanted to you know we confirmed with the client they said yeah go ahead and we did it and now it's blown so it's like i hope you made enough money on that event (laughs) to pay for all the subs you blew up right these are not uh, cheap systems so yeah i mean you got twenty thousand dollar subs yeah for one yeah so i mean there's six of them (laughs) you're fucked that's 120 grand worth of obviously it's not doesn't cost that much to repair them but you know i'm just saying it's it's they're not cheap though they're not cheap the magnets are really the expensive part you're going to go get the big piece of uh paper in the magnet and it's going to cost you at least half so we we had um uh i think it was a total of outside we had 12 um 24 inch subs and six 32 inch subs jeez um the 24s are uh, a dual voice coil subs, um, so those are those are magnets. Those are freaking heavy. Oh my god, they're <laughs> yeah, so they heavy. are. Uh, and 32s, they they don't have a magnet. They're driven by a linear motor from PowerSoft. Uh, so it's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's a whole other experience of taking that and doing a recone on it. And the reco- the actual speaker cone, it, it's not fabric. It's uh, carbon fiber. Oh yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I mean, it's just they'll just rip the waveform. If it was a, a a fabric cone, it would just tear itself apart. Just yeah. the amount of energy being pushed back and forth, you know, it's it's not going to be able to withstand those forces. So it's a stiff carbon fiber uh, cone. I mean, it's, it's weird to call it a cone because you always think of it's oh, it's you know. Yeah, that's what it is, though. It is. It's a cone. So yeah, it's crazy, man. That is crazy. Well, you know what? We are almost out of tape, brother. Uh-oh. That I didn't realize we were going so late. That's fantastic. What a great podcast, yeah, man. Well, We've just been chatting it up. I've been having a good time. Got a few missed calls from some coworkers, so well, I call them back. Call them back here yeah. in a second. Well, I'm going to wrap it up real quick. This has been To the Fulls with Jason Frober. I'd love to thank my guest, John Stevens, fantastic audio engineer. you got to come back, man. We can just oh, talk yeah. and talk and talk. Kayla. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love it, man. Well, Thank you for inviting me. Dude, it's been a total total privilege having you on the show, man. Thank you so much. Great to see you again, man. We're going to fade to black. Boom! Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.